live from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, welcome once again. It's Indiana University basketball. Hello, everybody. I'm Chuck Marlowe along with John Laskowski. And, John, this is the day we've been waiting for, 1985-86. The Kent State uh, squad comes in here already with two games under the belt, but this is opening day for Indiana. It's going to be an exciting day, Chuck. Uh, we got three new kids suited up. Uh, going to try their first chance in an Indiana uniform, and I, I think there is a big difference. You come out here for the first time, you practice for six weeks, but when you get that uniform on, uh, the scoreboard lights up, and you're out there in a game, uh, it, it's a unique feeling, and three kids uh, get to do that for Indiana today. A little bit of nervousness for some of these boys? I think so, and a little in the veterans, too. Uh, there's a lot of guys who play better in practice than they do in the games, and you got to learn that the games is where it counts, so you have to play well there, too. How about matchups between these two teams? Height-wise, they're pretty well balanced, aren't they? They're going to be about the same. Uh, uh, Coach has always talked about defensively. He's got to keep the, the ball out of the lane area when Indiana's on defense, and that'll be the real key. If, if Kent State's able to get the ball inside, it'll be tough to guard them. If Indiana can use its quickness to keep the ball away from there, it should be a low-scoring game. A couple of quick guards for Kent State. Toole and Roberts will be back to talk more about them and how they match against Indiana. We'll be back with the starting lineups in just a moment. The young lady for the tonsillectomy. First time I was here, I was 10, and they took my tonsils out. Now I manage this hospital, and for communications, I rely on GTE. When we added this wing, our GTE account manager even helped us tie into nationwide medical data networks. And GTE service is untapped 24 hours a day. She's going to be fine. Any messages? Sure, on your terminal. It takes a lot to satisfy us, but GTE does. Hey, excuse me? You got a minute? Uh, no, not really. I just got home from work. Oh. Yeah, I got a house to clean, dinner to cook, and two kids to take to piano lessons. You sound like a very busy person. I, I am. I hope you've got a few minutes to talk to your Farm Bureau insurance agent about life insurance. Everybody needs it, including you. Look, I really don't have the time. Besides, nothing ever happens to me. Hey, no piano lessons. <clears throat> You're shaving with coal. Coal? I'm shaving with my electric razor. And it takes coal to produce that electricity. Never thought of it like that. Coal generates more than half the electricity in the United States. It takes coal to fix your breakfast, tune in, and turn on. In fact, on the average, every American uses three tons of coal each year. Amex Coal Company, powering your world. Q95, the full spectrum of rock and roll. Bob and Tom, mornings on Q95, Sirius Radio. Crazy about it, the hottest ticket in Indianapolis. That's the power of love. An American original. Q95, Indiana's best rock and roll. There's Indiana's squad. We're introducing the lineups already. Kent State's Russ Kodalak is already on the court. Let's go down now to Chuck Kraft. At center, a 6'8 junior from Elyria, Ohio, number 50, Terry Wersch. At one guard position, a 5'11 senior from Toledo, Ohio, number 10, Mike Roberts. At the other guard position, a six-foot junior from Bay Village, Ohio, number 12, Bill Toole. The head coach for the Golden Flashes, now in his fourth season, Jim McDonald. And now for the Hoosiers of Indiana. Starting at one forward today, a 6'4 senior from Anderson, Indiana, number 21, Winston Morgan. At the other forward, a 6'6 junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 34, Andre Harris. The center, a 6'7 junior from Westchester, Illinois, number 24, Darrell Thomas. At one guard, a 6'2 junior from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. Rounding out the starting lineup, the other guard, a 6'1 senior from Anderson, Indiana, number 22, Stu Robinson. 
And the head coach for his Hoosiers, starting the 15th season here at Indiana, Bob Knight. Army Air Force ROTC color guard under the command of Cadet Master Sergeant Dave Smith. Let us pay honor to America with the IU pep band under the direction of Professor Wilbur England and featured vocalist Professor Roy Samuelson. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, can you Enthusiasm and excitement is here already, almost as if this was a collegiate crowd, John. But this has been vacation week for the Indiana students, the entire Thanksgiving week. And so some of the students are not here. We notice the stands are pretty well filled. There were some tickets being sold in the packages, in the books, uh, uh, the group packages. They have A and B groups. And uh, some of those have already been purchased up. Kent State, you see Indiana come on the field. Kent State is 2 0. They're led by number 50, Terry Worsh. Six foot eight, 230 pounds. He's uh, going to jump center against Andre Harris. He's averaging 19 points a game with 9.5 rebounds a game. So he's the big one to watch for Kent State. The officials for today's game, Sam Licklider, Mike Seacrest, and Norm Nelson. And the tip is controlled by Kent State. There you see how Worse really got up quickly that time and beat Andre Harris on the tip. On the drive, this is Roberts. There's a good feed off from the first two of the basket to Kubini on the assist from Roberts. Kubini from Clarkston, Michigan, puts Kent State ahead 2 0. Indiana works it in right away, and Darrell Thomas counters at the opposite end of the court for Indiana's first field goal. We're tied at two. Roberts is the ball control. There's a back cut, and Indiana's going to have to wake up on this one immediately. They could uh, have a field day all day today. Two quick defensive mistakes as the first play, uh, the guard was able to drive the lane, and now a simple back cut. Two easy layups for Kent State. Alford handling the ball for the first time. Winston Morgan. Around it comes to Harris. Posted low. It's Thomas Harris gets the feet back from Thomas. Andre Harris's first Big Ten field goal. We're tied at four. Kodalak. Averaging nine points per game. It comes right back around to Roberts. Then around the horn inside. Good block and a jump ball. As worst turn to go up to the basket. Daryl Thomas got a hand cleanly on the ball. There's the quickness we talked about. See a good look at Coach Knight there. The official's been standing in his way, and Coach cannot see how his defense is set up, or the offense is set up, so he's telling the official to please get out of the way once he see what's going on. They're all off the top of the key. This is Morgan looking underneath. Harris now rolls to the other side. Defensively, that last play was the quickness Darrell Thomas showed by blocking that shot. He, he did have not have good position, but he was able to stop the basket by using his quickness. Winston with a reverse layup draws the foul. It'll go against Kodalak. The basket will count, and Morgan, with an excellent move, puts Indiana in front. Let's look. Winston needs that confidence boost right here. You see he gets the ball, makes a nice move on the reverse layup, and gets fouled. 
And immediately we have a timeout called. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana leads Kent State 6-4. to four. I love this. We just added a family room. Now the family has a room, and I have quiet. No space blasters, no rock music. Just quiet. We got the loan from AFNB. They talk about having the advantage. Quiet. That's the advantage. If you have a need, we have your loan. Because at American Fletcher, the advantage is yours. American Fletcher. Thanks. Come along, please. This is the last discount tour I'll ever take. <laughs> Your wish is my command. Well, I'm thirsty, but on a diet. You can do better than that. A local champagne? Uh-uh. Hold out, hold out for the out of the ordinary. Sugar. I wish my boyfriend could see me now. There are the officials we talked about, McSecrets, Licklider, and Nelson. And at the line will be Winston Morgan. We have played almost two minutes. Indiana has taken a 6-4 lead after an early basket by Kent State. And Morgan counters with the first free throw, his third point. Indiana's lead is three. I watch Tool. Tool just sort of solos it underneath, had the shot. Here's a move into the basket. The foul as Kodalak, who's not afraid to take it up against good, strong, physical Indiana on the inside, draws the foul. Tool does a good job of driving into the lane. I don't think he's looking to score as much as when Indiana comes to guard him, he's going to pass the ball off there. You see Winston Moore come up with the foul. Kodalak, a 6'5 junior from Medina, Ohio. The second is good. Kodalak has three. Indiana leads by two. Robinson. Alford. Indiana has tried John to put the ball deep, so Alford and Robinson they haven't handled the ball too much in the outset of this contest. Right now they will, because Kent State's in the zone. First time we've seen him today in the zone defense. Alford, right side, he'll fire. Run of it off the mark. Rebound to Kodalak. He leads Kent State with 17 rebounds through the first two games. A little cut underneath as Kodalak was coming back, and Ian Tool just couldn't ho hook up. Tool thought he'd flare out to the corner. Winston Kodalak got beat. The first basket, uh, second basket Kent State scored. Winston got beat on a back door, but yet you see he's still pressuring the ball out. The Kent State player went back on the back cut. The pass went out of bounds, so it's a turnover for Kent State. Andre Harris. Good pass underneath, and shot is up and in. Really soft touch by Daryl Thomas, and I think, John, when we saw them play the Czechoslovakians, this is one thing that really came out uh, through the summer, was the improvement of Daryl Thomas. He sure did. Uh, there you see the series is the first time the two teams have met. A good follow on the opposite side by Kodalak. And but Indiana not boxing off on the boards. Darrell plays against some bigger players in the check game, and now you see him playing against a player his own size, and he's trying to use that quickness. He's got two early baskets. Robinson. Morgan wants to go underneath the Harris, now rolls it up. There's a lob. Oh, what a beautiful alley oop. Andre Harrison, a great timing pass from Stu Robinson. I think we'll see that a lot this year, Chuck, as people overplay Andre. He's got a great ability to go toward the basket, and Stu Robinson and Winston seem to be the two best passers to throw the pass just off the side of the rim. Andre's able to take it and put it right in. Up on top, Cubini. Ray Cubini handling the ball. Throws it away. Interception by Thomas. Now Indiana with a four-point lead as Thomas starts the drive and he's held starting into the lane area. The foul will go against number 12. That's Bill Tua, his first. Big difference I've seen so far, Chuck, from last year is remember Uve would set up on either block and try to work to get the ball open. And if he wasn't open, Stevie Alford would try to take the shot from the outside. 
here we, we've got 11 points already uh, and Stevie hasn't scored any uh, hasn't scored two yet the difference in this year's offense is coach wants the scoring to be a lot more spread out shot by Stu a lot more spread out and get everybody involved don't worry about Steve Alford he'll get his points worse with the rebound and Indiana getting just one opposite of the uh, one opportunity at the basket as Kent State really blocks out well now Indiana staying in its man forcing the offense high it's good defense right here two times now Kent State's had to bring it out to set up Tua works it around worse handling again a little skip step leans in up off the glass no foul and the rebound Thomas finally second effort off the basket however behind the back and a blocking foul on tool as Alford attempted to slip it behind him the other thing to notice about this year's team is how quickly they'll get the ball out it looked to me like uh, Daryl Thomas on that rebound had not even had his feet on the floor yet and already dished the ball out to Steve and was coming down with it so I think Indiana wants to try to beat the other team down the floor with their quickness again. Try to get some easy baskets. Robinson. So far, Indiana's guards not scoring. Cross court lob. There's a good ball fake by Alford. And all the way back out across court. That again by Harris. He's very sneaky with his passes. We saw a couple of those where he's looking one way and passes another. I think he got by a little bit there. There's a great feat from Robinson to Harris. There you see a sneaky move as you talked about, Chuck. He snuck around under the basket. I think Stu did miss him on the lob pass, but Andre's known enough in these six weeks to just keep trying to get himself open, and Stu's going to hit him with that pass. Kodalak and out to Worsh, almost stolen by Thomas. Worsh will fire from the line. No good rebound. And it's going to be a foul against Thomas. Got a little body into that one as he leaned in for, for the board. A little mental mistake there going for the ball. Look at Stu talking to him right now. He's saying, look, you can't lean out there to go for that steal, get out of position, because this guy's their best player. As Worsh came down, he missed the shot. Daryl did not recover in time to get the block out, and then he's forced to commit the foul. All right, it's inbounds to Roberts. I like to have the ball in his hands as much as possible. Try a little back cut on Alford this time, and Steve reacts. That's where you want worse to handle the ball, though, right at the top of the key. He's not as dangerous from there. Look at the outlet pass again. Here's Alford. He has Morgan on the opposite side. He goes to Harris, and Harris gets it right back out of bounds as both Harris and Thomas. Thomas with a deflection off the boards, and Harris with a loose ball, and they couldn't control. You got two guys going after the ball, and that's brought Coach up off the bench to... Uh, Give him a little encouragement there. That's the, it looked like Harris had all alone, and, and Daryl actually knocked it out of his hands. Try to roll Roberts off a pick off the top of the key. Indiana again responding well with a little threat, a uh, little trap threat on that side of the floor. Working around Cabini. Here's Worsh. He fires over Thomas and rolls it in. Terry Worsh. All right, there's a good uh, sign on the defense there. It's too late to guard Worsh once he gets the ball right there at the block. Uh, Daryl Thomas has got to get around and prevent that pass. Alford all alone. And credit that on some good full court vision by Winston Morgan. I think Stevie will be more effective this year on offense. Everybody last year kept looking for him because they knew he had to score 18 to 20 points a game for Indiana to be effective. Steal by Thomas. He drives against two and stuffs it. Worsh and Cabini just laid back because they knew Daryl Thomas was going all the way. There he didn't really get himself out of position. He reached out and made the steal. Oh, great move inside. And this boy, Mike Roberts, is quick. He left Robinson on his heels. The help was gone from the inside. Roberts get beat, gets beat about 15 feet. There's nobody to help. There'll be a substitution. Alford. Ducks it inside, rolls it across the front of the rim. That is just one man effort. As I mentioned before, Daryl made the steal. Teams are going to concentrate more on the entire, stopping the entire Indiana team instead of just Steve. So he should get better shots this year than he did last. Kodalak, Worsh, how high Thomas makes him play. Oh, good shot from the side. That's Ray Cobaini. Steve Alford's been working a lot on his defense. He got hung up on a pick there. And that's left two wide open. 
Robinson works it inside off the front of the rim. No good. There's Morgan on the follow and he scores. Winston Morgan who is appearing to be and in some of the practices I've seen too, more hungry for the ball than he's been in the past. And we have a foul outside. It's going to be against Robinson I believe as once again Mike Roberts makes the drive. The foul is against Robinson but we have time out with 11 29 left to play you're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network Indiana leads Kent State 21 13. more important to Hooks than your family's good health. That's why our pharmacists in Green take their time to keep up with the latest developments in medicine. We like to see you smile. The big holiday is on its way, and so are the big values during CarQuest Auto Parts Store's 12 Gifts of Christmas Sale. Special holiday values like this professional quality heavy-duty booster charger, just $119.95, or this 10-amp battery charger, only $36.88. For the young ones, there's this big, sturdy steel CarQuest toy truck by Tonka, only $9.99. Great savings, great gifts, with CarQuest 12 Gifts of Christmas Sale. CarQuest, the right place to buy auto parts. Indiana has hit five of its last six shots, and this is one that really brought the crowd here at Assembly Hall to its feet. There's Daryl Thomas going in for that stuff. Look how close his head comes to the bottom of that backboard, but I think as a player like Daryl who has done that enough times, he knows exactly where that backboard is. You'd hate to see anybody uh, hit their head like there, but I think uh, as high as he gets up, as many times he's done, he knows exactly where that is. The foul was against Stu Robinson, his second, and uh, it was a common foul. So the ball was taken out, and uh, Londell Owens in on that last time out, hits the basket as Kent State tries to work its way back. They are within six, 21-15. You see Delray Brooks, 23, checks in. He passes to 20. Ricky Calloway also in at that timeout. And a foul. It'll be a block uh, against Kent State. And it's against number 30. That would be Londell Owens, his first. Owens from Annapolis, Maryland. Averages six points per game. And good look at him. His first personal foul at the line. Winston Morgan. Well, we've seen Winston create more things and, and just mention his name so many more times, Chuck, it seems. And that's exactly what he's got to do. He, he's not going to want to score 20 points a game, but he's one of he wants to create situations where the other his teammates can score and of course he's going to chip in himself. Well, Winston has seven already and we are not at the midway point of the first half. Tool on the drive there's a little bit of help out it shows very obviously on the screen there how Indiana has to come over and protect. Owens posted his worst and Thomas is right off his shoulder. So there was no room to make the pass there. They came back on top and Alford got a hand on it. A lot of good defense in that segment as Kent State's being taken out of their offense by the pressure Indiana's put on. And of course that will also lead to turnovers eventually. There's Roberts cutting inside and over the shoulder is Delray Brooks and he commits the foul on Delray his first. Boy, Mike Roberts is really creating some trouble. You saw him beat Stu Robinson twice on the drive. And now Delray Brooks is going to have to guard him as Indiana tries to use its quickness with their big men. Uh, Kent State's using their quickness with Mike Roberts, and so far Indiana's not been able to stop him. Well, we had well expected the guards to be very, very quick. That uh, was the book on them when they came in. And uh, Roberts averages six and a half points per game. Off the rim, no good. Rebound was deep, and it came to Alford, again behind the back, and takes it right into a crowd. And then puts up uh, a fourth shot. Here comes Roberts, and he'll make the move on Morgan, but Morgan shut him down, yet Roberts still gets the basket. Well, Roberts making quite a play here. He's kept, can't stay close. They're down six. Morgan, two more. Maybe Winston will get 20 this game. I shouldn't have said that so early. Winston's light is shining in the first half. Obviously in the doghouse last year in the latter part of the season. There's a good inside cut. 
and Roberts takes too many steps. There was good defense. Indiana had really closed it off, prevented his baseline move. Better move by Delray, you're right, Chuck. But again, you've got to have the defense on Roberts right from the foul line as he's running down to the basket. If you enable him to get that ball, he's going to create some problems for you. Uh, Delray was late with the defense, but still got the job done. Deflected. And again, Roberts has a hand on it as the pass inside goes to Callaway and out of bounds. Here you see the turnovers, four for Kent State. Indiana with just one so far. Out of bounds play for Stevie. Kent State uh, stopped it there. Now they've gone to a 2 3 zone. Inside it goes to Thomas. Steps in, has it knocked away. And up and out with the ball. Good hands, good alertness, and he knew where the basket was. Ricky Callaway. Seems that this year's team, Chuck, is obviously quick afoot, but boy, they're quick to react. Uh, when the ball's on the floor, when the ball's around, it seems we've been able to come up with those kind of plays. Two more. Londell Owens. Tool used his quickness there. Again, you're right, Chuck. Those two guards for Kent State are gonna, are gonna create havoc if they're able to drive and penetrate in the middle and dish that ball out. Here's Thomas. Worst gets a hand on it, commits the foul. It was not on the ball, apparently. It was on the wrist. Have a halftime score. Michigan and Georgia Tech and the Rex of Georgia Tech lead 25-17. That's at halftime. Into the second half. Another score, and we'll pick this up for you. North Dakota. Notre Dame? Notre Dame. All right. Notre Dame and Butler. Notre Dame 41, Butler 29. We'll see them on Tuesday. That's right. right here at Assembly Hall. That's Notre Dame is who we'll see on Tuesday. Well, look at the build on Daryl Thomas, and I think Chuck, uh, uh, he's improved that since we saw him last year. He He's going to have to play center this year, and, and unless he goes against a guy 6, 10, 11, or, or 7 foot, I think he's going to be able to hold his own as far as his body strength and quickness is concerned. I'd be interested to see him play a seven footer. Look at that. Steal by Thomas, and they call a foul. Said he had him by the hand before he got the ball. It was good, uh, a good idea. Darrell had the move and the timing. Yeah, close call there, but again, a good play, good anticipation, and quickness on defense. That's Thomas' is second. Indiana's lead is 10, 29-19. We have 8.43 remaining in the first half from Assembly Hall. The opening game for the Hoosiers against Kent State. Kent State has already played two. They did free to uh, St. Francis of Pennsylvania, 92-59, and Ashland this last uh, Tuesday night, I believe, 73-52. Tool. Works it out of trouble in the corner. That's one place a small guard really doesn't want to be, John. Good and steal. here's the tip. Steal by Alford. Morgan. Thomas. Callaway. Offensive foul on Ricky Callaway. His first foul. Looked like he had his head down that time. Uh, lost control of the ball, and as he picked it up, Kent State was in position to take that charge. Some substitutions now for Kent State. Uh, Robert, Robert, uh, Roberts Michael. is back in again, and uh, Cabini. Let's take a look again at, at what happened here with Callaway inside. He's going right up with the ball. Not really good position there. Worsh was right there to take the uh, take the charge. Ricky forced that one a little. Mike, uh, Reggie Adams, rather, number 20, handling the ball. Over to Roberts, and now to Cabini. 54 is Mangapora. And it's taken out of his hands. Callaway, oh, good body control by Ricky Callaway on a pass that really was behind him. Del Rey with a good steal, and he dribbled around to get open, and then he had to be careful on the pass because uh, Adams was right there to try to steal it. Callaway makes a good play. A little contact inside, and I think we're going to have another foul called against Indiana. As we have a substitution, it will be against Delray Brooks. Our first look at number 11, Todd Jadlow. Jadlow is 6'10", a sophomore from Salinas, Kansas. Talked in the pregame, Chuck, about the three new players. We've seen them all now. Andre Harris, who started the game. Rick Calloway came in. And now Todd Jadlow, their first day in Indiana uniform. 
Well, this boy can do it all. Roberts has five points. That's his first free throw. Averages six and a half points per game. Toledo runs a high post. The guards pass in, and both guards crisscross off that post. That's when they've been dangerous, if they can get the ball going to the basket. If they can't, the ball's reversed, picked down on the guards, and the guards will try to take that shot. Now, Callaway tries to get it through a pack, puts it right at the feet of Kent State, and uh, it's kicked. It's a turnover against Indiana, but uh, we have arrived at the 726 mark and a timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Indiana leads Kent State 31 to 20. Trail boss on a cattle drive. You put in long days under the big sky. And when the work's over, you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Brewed the natural way so it's always as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountain. Head for... My dad's a great guy. He's entertaining. Terrific sense of humor. <laughs> Mom says he takes care of me in ways I don't even know about. Life insurance from your Farm Bureau insurance agent. Another way to show how much you care. While the Indiana University students are on semester break, it'll be a chance for you to see the basketball Hoosiers of Bob Knight in Assembly Hall. Ticket orders are now being taken for IU games on December 21st with Iowa State on January 2nd with Michigan and January 5th against Michigan State. Now, tickets are $8 and $4 for each game, and they can be ordered through the athletic ticket office in Assembly Hall. A little time confusion down here at the timers and scores bench. Uh, just checking to see apparently uh, something may have come unplugged at any rate. Uh, Cleve Ellett. He's uh, checking out it right now. I think it's the the 45 second clock. Maybe they have a little problem with that. First game of the year. We've right. Got to get these things ironed out. Yeah, the 45 second clock is off. Well, we will be we will be using the 45 second clock for all games. As a matter of fact, the NC2A has uh, mandated this for all games this year. So well, we tried it last year. I don't think it'll make a real big difference. There you see the two coaches. Coach Knight made an interesting comment today in the pregame show that James McDonald, the Kent State coach, was a senior in college when Coach Knight was a senior in high school. And uh, I believe Jim went to Bowling Green. He was an All-MAC. At Bowling Green. And so you, you high school players out there can imagine if you were growing up in Ohio and knew about Bowling Green or knew about Indiana, if you grew up in Indiana, you see the seniors on this Indiana team and you say, boy, I'd like to be a, a college basketball player. Well, that's the same thing going through Coach's mind as he watched Jim McDonald uh, at Bowling Green. And that's kind of how their friendship started. And then uh, Coach, of course, invites Kent State to come in and to play in assembly hall so there are relationships that you'll build as a basketball player that will just seem to follow you for a long time but now we're getting into a real discussion here well, as I, to what we're going to do right i think i think what they're doing we'll have to wait and see maybe an announcement will be made by chuck crab they will be keeping possibly the 45 second clock over here on the side uh, there seems to be a shorted wire at any rate uh, the indiana people the powers that be are going to try to have that corrected and in meanwhile, the two teams have huddled around their coaches. The interesting thing that you mentioned, uh, McDonald was in a little pickup game, apparently, up in uh, the northern part of the state of Ohio one time when Coach was up there. And uh, they needed somebody else to play. Coach asked if he could play, and he went out and uh, got on the floor, and he played against Jim. So this, uh, this friendship the, uh, matured at a very uh, early time for both. That's the story of the old, old basketball players never die. They just want to be coaches <laughs> then, right? That's right. Apparently so. I, I got a lot to look forward to. <laughs> yes, <you do. laughs> Let's take a look at the field goal percentage so far. It's 13 of 18 for Indiana. That's 72%. And that's uh, obviously very well, a uh, very good job. Kent State is 9 of 16 for their 56%. So uh, Kent State is shooting the ball very it's not well. Bad shooting, Again, no. Working inside. Let's take a replay here. Delray's fast break, a good spin dribble. I see he just throws a little to bit Callaway. 
but he had to protect the ball. Right. I mean, if the, if the pass is thrown right to him, then Adams has a chance That's to come right. and make that steal. So uh, good look by Delray. He has looked well so far in early practice. The turnovers, Kent State now with six. Indiana with just two. And I think, again, we saw a change from this last year, Chuck, where, where Indiana uh, forced themselves into a lot of turnovers uh, so far with 7.26 to go in this first half. Just two turnovers for Indiana. If you just joined us, there is a problem, possibly a short, in the 45-second clock. They're making some equipment change, uh, apparently going to string a new wire. And uh, the clock goes back and cycles, but then shuts off. Well, Indiana, as John mentioned earlier, will host Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, this afternoon, defeating Butler at halftime, at least leading, score 41-29. And uh, Digger has one of his better teams in the last five or six years. Barlow and uh, Waters. Some of the others rounding out uh, an experienced squad. Notre Dame defeated Indiana at South Bend last year, largely due to the play of freshman Waters. So Coach Knight would like to uh, get some good performance defensively out of his guards here this afternoon to prepare for that young man who will be coming in here. 7.30 tip-off time next to tonight. That's a rivalry that goes oh way back, my. Chuck. I'm looking forward to, to see that Notre Dame team. Uh, Kempton, of course, he's going to be a good player. Barlow and Hicks from Indianapolis Cathedral. Obviously, they want to play well here, but it'll be a great test for, for Indiana. Very difficult pre-Big Ten uh, season schedule here for Indiana. I think it's going to really test uh, the kind of team they are, and again, hopefully you're trying to improve with each game that goes by. There you see Coach Knight, Jim McDonald, and the official discussing exactly how to handle this thing. That, uh, that uh, Notre Dame game for you, the three years that you played against them, John, had to be sort of a mixed emotion type game. Well, it was. We Being played, South uh, Bend. exactly, we played up in South Bend one of those years. Uh, I'm sorry, two of those years. And we were able to come away with victories both times. So uh, to beat Notre Dame at Notre Dame is, uh, is a real treat. Of course, when Notre Dame came down here, they were able to beat us, so uh, the home, home field advantage did not work that time. We're ready to go. Okay, clock's ready. Indiana will inbounds in front of its own bench. It'll be Morgan, and let's see who he chooses. He does. He picks up Brooks. There are the team fouls. Indiana still is not in the one-and-one. One. Inside to Callaway, up off the glass. That's... The key, good hands, John, where he can go up, get the ball, come down, go right back up again without him to shuffle for position. And Stu Robinson, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Delray Brooks was looking for that pass. Good defense there. I think he's going to get called for a block, though. Let's take a look again as Delray has picked up personal foul number three. All right, there you see the cut by Roberts. He goes over the center, and Delray had to fight behind him, so Roberts is open, cutting down the lane. We talked about that before. It looked like once Roberts got the ball, Delroy was in pretty good position. The referee called him on the bump, and now Roberts goes to the free throw line. Indiana's got to uh, find a way to stop him from cutting into the middle. John, as quick as Mike Roberts is, defensively, you would never try to go over the top of the screen, would you? to try to stay with it. You've got to play off your man as the ball goes to the opposite side. You've got to play off your man enough and know where that pick is on the center. So that as you see Roberts cut through there, you can either go over the top or go behind it. That's where your defensive center can help you also. Uh, Daryl Thomas has got to sit back now. It's Jadlow. Jadlow's got to sit back and say, here comes the pick. You've got to get around it because you've got to beat the uh, you got to beat your man to the spot where he's going to receive the ball. Okay, Terry Worsh takes a rest and in the lineup is number 54, Mangapura, once again for Kent State. Indiana uh, takes the ball out on the side. There was a lane violation on the last free throw by Roberts. It would not count, but those two do. Steve Alter. We've seen Steve uh, play a little more on the on the wing on the zone offense, zone defense, uh, than, he, than he has on the point. I think you can score more effectively from the wing. And so you got a guy like Winston inside. Steve can score from the outside. Well, Chad Lowe just a little bit late getting over. A blocking foul on him and driving in. Magna, uh, Manga Pora with a good screen underneath, but 34 Kodalak gets the basket. Backdoor play. It looked like Andre Harris beat that time. Chad Lowe not quite in position. And that time our quickness hurt us as, as Harris tries to go out to prevent the pass coming in. The backdoor cuts wide open. Todd Jadlow's first foul. And Kodalak makes it a three-point play. He has eight. 35-24. Indiana's lead is 11. Up it comes to Alford. 
Now Indiana tries to set it up. Morgan back at the guard into Jadlow. Soft in front of the line. Good hands and two points. He's got a good shot. Uh, he's about 6, 9, or 10. He's worked pretty well inside of practice. Coach felt that he'd give him a chance inside. He makes his first shot. Well, once again, look, look how quick Tool is. We've been talking a lot about Roberts, but Tool is very quick. Got a good first step. And misses everything. Air ball, but on the weak side, Kodalak found his way underneath the defense. Cole times now rebounding his hurt inside. Again, Tool goes right around Stevie, takes a bad shot. That's where Indiana's got to come up with that rebound. Alford, good defense by Tool. Here's Harris high in the air. Bounce off the rim. And what do we have? A pushing foul underneath against Indiana. Jadlow. In working for a position, picked up his second foul. Andre Harris checks out. Callaway and Isle now will be forward. Steve Isle from Hamilton, Ohio, seeing his first action for 1985-86. Jim Mangapora, a freshman from Canfield, Ohio, at the line, averaging three points per game through Kent State's first two games. He'll have the one and one. up and in by Kodalak just again working through Indiana off the boards the Hoosiers playing poorly on the boards and that's an even dozen for Kodalak last three or four minutes just a lot of mental mistakes and you can see how quickly a team can uh, cut the margin Kyle tries to set a screen underneath Morgan Alford makes the drive and scores People respect Stevie's shot so much that when he shows that shot fake and gets them off their feet, he can drive right in. That time I got him a layup. Interesting to know the mind has to respond so quickly, John, when he knows whether or not to take the shot after making the ball fake or make the drive. Good defense by Winston. You saw him stop Roberts from getting the ball inside there. Here it comes again. And again, Winston cut him off going to the basket. Good defense. This time Winston went over the top of the screen with it. And what do we have? Blocking foul. Now, aggressive play. He's, he's trying to stay with Roberts. He sees a loose ball, uh, and then he runs right into the Kent State player for the foul. So he's hustling, but just at the wrong place at the wrong time. It's Morgan's second. That puts Mangapura back on the line. You would think with Indiana's hide underneath that uh, they'd be able to come up with that rebound fairly, fairly easily. Not so the last few times down. Okay, Mangapore takes a little more time this time and gets the roll. There you see Steve Isle, number 32 in the ball game. Uh, Andre Harris taking Andre Harris's place. So again, Indiana without, uh, with not a very tall lineup, especially with Harris and Thomas out of there at the same time. Mangapore makes both of them good this time. He's two for three. Full court press now by Kent State. Looks like a man to man. They want the ball in the hands of this man, Alford. Under to Morgan and misses the shot. Back into the hands of Isle, though. So the Hoosiers got a break there, but boy, did he have a basket. He really had it set up. Morgan, baseline, draws the foul. Mangapura gets an arm, and that'll send Winston to the line. Boy, just a good pass inside. And then Winston missed the shot. Let's take a look at his drive, though. He's come to the left. Looks like he's shut out here on that angle. See how the backboard mm -hmm. looks like it interferes with his good camera angle that time. Uh, but he got out of it. Can't stay with the foul. Terry Wirch back in. Mangapura will take a rest. 30 Adams make that Owens, Londell Owen back in. And Owens replaces Cubini, who leaves with four points. Hear the officials saying, relax, you've got a pair. And here's the first. Indiana's been spending a lot of time, I mean a lot of time, John, on the free throw line. Well, we had difficulty in that Czechoslovakian game. And obviously, Coach wanted to spend some time at the free throw line. We talked about this before. The only time to really practice the game situation, of course, is in the game. But, of course, it helps all the, uh, the more you can do it in practice, the more it helps also. 
Once again, they try that little cut through the lane. And here's a feed to Wirtz on the weak side. There's a good play. It's it left the baseline open. See, and if you're able to get the ball inside there, down to the baseline with that guard. All right, let's see if we can see what happens. You get the ball inside. Now uh, another one of your defensive players has to come help. It's Jadlow. As he comes to help, that leaves Wirsch wide open. You dump the ball inside, and you're shooting layups all day. And, and that's the reason you cannot let the guard get the ball. Not that he's going to score every time, but he can create a lot more situations, which is what he did just then. It's no good. Jadlow with the ball and throws it right behind aisle. It's no good. A rebound works off the glass by Harris. That's goaltending. Wirsch will get the two. And we have a game again. Jadlow with a good rebound. But right there, Katalik, he's done a he's done an excellent job. He's got 12 points now, 14, counting that goaltending, and a lot of them just being in, in the rebounding position there. Indiana's rebounding, not getting the job done. Now it's a seven-point ball game. Four minutes remaining, 41-34. Kyle has it taken right out of his hands by Londell Owens. And then gets it right back. Good heads up play. You can't get, get your head down when you make a mistake. Isle is watching and turns around and makes a steal. There has to be one of the classiest passes we've seen in about a year. Well, I think you're going to see the lob pass to Harris come from Stu and Winston. And you're going to see that little uh, inside pass by Stevie Alford because he can really move that ball around. Here he gets called for a block. Let's look at the pass from Steve. Now he's inside, and he just flicks the ball right over to Andre, and that's the way to take the ball up strong. On defense, then, Stevie gets called on a not, uh, not too popular of a call with the foul. There'll be a timeout. Well, Indiana will call that timeout with 324 remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana leads Kent State 43-34. Here in Central Indiana, the name is Nissan. The place is your Central Indiana Datsun dealer. Right now, he's loaded with brand new Nissan cars and trucks. More than he's had in months. More economical Sentras, Stanzas, Pulsars, luxurious Maximas, and the awesome 300ZX. Plus, more top Nissan pickups. Want to get more for your money? The name is Nissan for cars and trucks. See your Central Indiana Datsun dealer. He's dealing today. Buy me, buy me, buy me. Before you buy a business phone system from a stranger, look into Centrex from Indiana Bell. With Centrex, you can stuff each phone with all the features you want. And phones for Centrex can cost you less, too. You can freeze your phone costs for the next 14 years. And it doesn't cost you a ton to tie all your locations together. Centrex can save you a lot. In fact, you can save enough to buy a company car. Investigate Centrex, the business phone system from Indiana Bell. We have 324 remaining. That last foul on Steve Alford certainly did not set well with many people, namely number one, Steve. Number two, about 15,000 people here this afternoon. And uh, number three, Coach Bob Knight. Not necessarily in that order, but uh, at any rate, number 12, Bill Toole, six-footer junior from Bay Village, Ohio, averaging 17 points per game and scoreless to this point will be shooting two shots. Well, Indiana is still shooting well, though. 18 out of 25 from the field is 72 percent. But Kent State is 14 to 24 at 58. So that's what's kept them right here in the game. Rebounds. Uh, Kent State's out rebounding Indiana. Indiana now with five turnovers. So three quick turnovers uh, has put uh, Kent State back in the ball game. Seven point game. 43 36 is the score. Butler loses to Notre Dame 87 to 56. A couple more scores for you. We get the opportunity watching the ball. Here's Harris, and he's fouled as he goes up, and Harris will go to the line to shoot as Londell Owens picks up his second personal foul. Georgia Tech and Michigan with 15 minutes left in the game. I can't believe the score. Georgia Tech 29, Michigan 23. Somebody's playing a lot of keep away there, and yet the 45-second clock, John, what are you going to do? Well, must be good defense because... Uh... They haven't been able to stall. There you see Andre with that basket. He got taken out of the game earlier in the half here. He got beat on a on a back cut. His man went right in for the layup. Coach sat him down for a while. 
And as you've seen now that he's back in, back in the game a minute or so, he's made some things happen. He's got eight points now. This is the second up and in by Callaway. My, oh my. Great rebound there, good quickness and anticipation. Oh, you. That's the excitement I've been talking about all year. We don't know how good the team's going to be. It's going to be exciting, though. Knocked away. Chablo to Alter. Has Callaway in front. Harris on one side. Takes it right into the crowd and draws the foul. This reminds me of the days when Steve used to play with Newcastle. That's just about the way he'd do it. Height didn't make a bit of difference to him. He wanted to take it in himself. A spin dribble there. He gets around two. He goes up with it. Look at how Harris fights for that inside position. Indiana with an interesting lineup uh, right now. They got Jadlow at center. So you move Harris uh, at a forward. Uh, Isle, Callaway, and Alford. Uh, uh, well, it could be three guards, but then again, it could be two forwards and, and one guard. So I think Coach is still looking uh, to find the five players out there that are going to get the job done. Obviously, got to rest players once in a while. Winston's on the bench. But you want that you want that consistent play to keep on moving to, regardless of who's in the game. Steve's first trip to the line and he makes them both. He has 10 points after a slow start but not slow because look uh, at this match. Oh I'm sorry. Looked, no that's uh, right. Uh, Delroy Harris was on Roberts the last time down the floor just on a switch though as Harris moves back inside now. OK now uh, Callaway draws the foul. His second. It was just a pick that was set out high by Roberts, and Callaway failed to adjust to it. This is the same type of offense Michigan runs. In fact, we used to call this the, uh, the Michigan offense, where they keep that high center. When I played with C.J. Kupek, would sit right there in the post, and they'd send their guards off that pick, and boy, you'd get rubbed off of there uh, in a hurry. And, to, and Kent State is using that today, and uh, it's caused Indiana some problems. Roberts good on both his efforts this time. He has eight points. Remember the other free throw last time the line was nullified because of a lane violation. 48-38. Indiana by 10. Cross court to Isle. Indiana now looking for some opportunities. They can create a lot of things, and that's an example. Callaway with uh, an opportunity, saw an angle, moved up with his great reach and his leaping ability, went high in the air for the two. Right, you're right, Chuck Harrison. Callaway both can shoot the ball off the dribble. You know, Scott May used to be able to do that. And now we got some more players who can shoot off the dribble. Owens drops it off. Worst misses. Kodalak misses. Jadlow out of bounds when he was touched by the ball. So it will be Kent State. Indiana just not coming up with that ball on the Kent State shots. A little pressure. Oh, what a rolling cut. Move that was made. Knocked out of his hands. Dive for the ball. Underneath this pack, we'll have a jump ball, and that's Callaway. Down hard for the ball. Alternate possession, however, gives it back to Kent State, but there's some good hustle. Again, Indiana with the ball. Look at the cut to the basket. It Chad wasn't quite that quick. <laughs> Not quite that quick. You're right, Chuck. Worsh knocks it away, and now Callaway's going right down on the floor. And at least come out of that jump ball. Don't let him make a quick pass out for the layup. Kent State's able to keep it. Minute 47 left to play in the first half. Indiana by 12. 50 to 38. Opening game of the season for the Hoosier. Indiana defeated Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia in an exhibition game. 94 to 74. Knocked away again. Here comes Callaway. This is a very aggressive team. There's a draw right at the free throw line by Callaway. He has a dozen. Boy, that's a, a tough shot for a freshman in your first game. Come down on that fast break. He looked like he felt that confidence as he pulled up and made the jumper. There well, you see Harris on Roberts. Harris now. on Roberts. He gets hung up on that pick. Roberts has 10. Interesting, John. That's uh it's just a little alley there on the lane that uh, Roberts is able to find. I think they've run that play every time down the floor, but Indiana still hasn't come out with a defense for it uh, consistently. A little bad passing by the Hoosiers there turns it over. We're inside a minute. Kodalak 
Back out on top to Owen. It won't fall. Jadlow off his shoulder. It'll be out of bounds Kent State as he fought to keep Worsh away from the ball and then couldn't handle it. Courtney Woody for Indiana Junior College transfer in his last year of eligibility will replace Todd Jadlow. Courtney from Vincennes, Indiana. To Kodalak. Roberts back around to Kubaney. And Kubaney, averaging nine points per game, has six. Callaway can handle the ball, as you see. Decidedly left handed, however. On that drive. Now, Witty. 18 seconds. Alford handling the ball with 11 seconds. You can imagine they would want him to take the shot. Off to Alford, free throw line. It won't fall, four seconds. Worsh out with the ball, and they'll be content to take the last shot from midcourt. It just goes over the rim. And we have come to the end of the first 20 minutes of play. Exciting at times, careless at other times, but nonetheless, a pretty good first half for Indiana. The end of the first half finds the score Indiana 52, Kent State 42. We'll be back to check individual scoring in just a minute. Without Amex coal, practice would be over. It takes coal to produce the electricity that lights basketball courts all the way from backyards to assembly hall. Amex Coal Company. Bet you never thought of us as a basketball power. Take a look at a Tom Wood Toyota deal. A real close look. Get the feel of the car. Go all over it. Then check Tom Wood's price. That's a deal you won't want to let slide by. Toyota Celica, a sleek performer, powerful too. Its two and a half liter engine delivers 116 horsepower in all the right places. Drive one now at Tom Wood. Tom Wood Toyota, 4202 Lafayette Road. Good cars, great prices. Any other deal is just for the birds. If you operate a restaurant, service station, or any kind of business, if you purchase supplies for a church or club, you should be a member of the Wholesale Club, where more than 10,000 business owners find merchandise and supplies at prices below their normal suppliers. Sure, I could have had it delivered, but by coming here, I could save $100 a week. Have a ball at the Wholesale Club. Grand opening at High School Road just north of West 38th Street. Call 897-CLUB. Worth a trip to come over and, and buy it right. Meet the rugged new backhoe loaders from Ford. The 14-foot 565B and the 15-foot 655A, powered by tough Ford diesels. They dig hard, fast, deep. You get synchronized 4x4 power reversing transmission. Powerful hydraulics designed for uptime. These new rigs can increase your productivity and profitability. 7 and 3 quarters percent financing, available at Bright Equipment. 2935 Bluff Road in Indianapolis. Dr. David Tavel and Premium Optical have joined forces. Trust Dr. David Tavel's Premium Optical for quality eyewear at the lowest possible price. And that's a promise from the doctor. And you're hot to go. John Laskowski, Joe Smith, my opinion right here in the closing minutes of the first half was Indiana seemed to be terribly concerned about how to keep Roberts from getting that rub off on the middle and getting the back door cuts that uh, Kent State was getting. And then all of a sudden, Worsh comes to life. Uh, Kodalak comes to life over on the side. On Once again, good execution by the guards. That one play, Chuck, we talked about Roberts cutting inside. It looked like Indiana had good control of the game, and here they end up giving 42 points away in the first half. Uh, you create things by getting that first man around that pick open. Even if he can't score, he can then lead the next guy to the basket, and that's what happened. And Worsh, like you said, came right back in the ballgame. Joe, what did you see statistically in that first half? Well, it was kind of interesting. I think uh, we saw the scrappiness of the Hoosiers. We had it with seven steals in the first half, uh, two apiece for Steve Alford and also Daryl Thomas, who played uh, quite strong in the uh, first half. But, you know, as Coach was pointing out, Chuck and Laz, in the in the pregame show, he wanted to defensively to control the, uh, the lane and uh, to keep the offense away from the baseline. Incidentally, there's Sam Alford. We have him on camera right now. Thanks. 
they've got a game tonight, so don't worry back in Newcastle. <laughs> uh, Coach Alford will be back for tonight's game. Red hot shooting, Chuck, unofficially. We had Indiana hitting for the first half uh, about 72% on 21 of 29, and Kent State was staying in the ball game at one stretch of the uh, first half. They were a 10 out of 12, uh, about four minutes to play in the first half, and, but they hit only three of their last nine, so that brought their average down, and of course, they're still very much in the hunt, trailing by only 10. Well, I was going to say, the way this game's going, a couple of mistakes one way or right. the other, and they can be right back in this game. Today's game, and uh, we'll tell you that we have a special halftime show coming up for you here in just a minute. We will remind you today's game between Indiana and Kent State is being played at Assembly Hall here in Bloomington. The score at halftime, Indiana 52, Kent State 42. The house I grew up in held a lifetime of love and hope and wonderful memories. Now I'm buying a home for my family to grow up in. Got the mortgage where Dad went. American Fletcher. Get your mortgage from the bank that puts more people in more homes than any bank in Indiana. American Fletcher. The advantage is yours. American Fletcher, thanks for the memories. Give me a light. Go! Uh, Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Thank you. Because everything else is just a light beer. For young Wilbur Shaw, the Shelby County Fair was the event of the year. Good luck, Wilbur. We'll do our best. Great belly. And the annual goat race was the highlight of the fair. From these humble beginnings, Wilbur Shaw went on to win the Indianapolis 500 race three times and distinguish himself as one of the greatest drivers in the history of auto racing. Yeah. Wilbur Shaw, another Indiana legend brought to you with pride by Farm Bureau Insurance. We're at halftime of the Kent State game, and I'm Kit Field Kruger, happy to be with you again this season. There's been a lot of concern about college athletics, about whether athletes get a good education and whether they graduate. Indiana University President John W. Ryan has been heading up the NCAA's President's Commission, which is taking a good hard look at the role athletics plays on a college campus. The general sports public is uh, offended, disgusted with evidences of uh, rules violations and cheating. I think the press also has been shocked in some cases, certainly uh, anxious that uh, schools and their athletic departments uh, do something about uh, a very bad situation. Earlier this month, President Ryan addressed a group of student affairs officers and restated the goals being set down by the NCAA Commission. The convention to which presidents came in larger number than ever before resoundingly approved these measures. Schools must submit reports to the NCAA on their athletes' academic progress by individual, by class standing, by major. A school's president must oversee the athletic department's budget, identify sources and amount of booster group funds, and assure propriety of their use. Repeated major violations within a five-year period will invoke suspension of an institution's involvement at all in a sport for a two-year period. A coach guilty of rules violations will remain subject to sanctions even if that coach moves to another school and athletes themselves 
will be held accountable to comply with recruitment and other rules and be subject to penalty sanctions if guilty of violations. Perhaps more significant than any of these individual measures was this fact. There was virtually no opposition to these measures. We'll have some concluding comments from President Ryan in just a moment. will solve the problems but college athletics will be a lot more fun and uh, people will be a lot happier if we can put an end to corruption in, in college athletics be with us again next Tuesday evening when our guest will be coach Bob Knight I'm Kit Field Kruger for IU Halftime let's pause now to hear from our local stations this is the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network A simple shopping trip without the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages could be an unforgettable experience. You could end up going in circles or going no place fast. And getting there, too late. Going down one blind alley after another. Why go through that when you can go through Indiana's most complete shopping guide? Before you leave, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. Here he comes now. You see anything suspicious? I don't know. He keeps staring at his cigar like there's something different about it. I bet it's the wrapper. Huh? Yeah, most cigars don't use natural leaf wrappers anymore. Now, gosh, your vein is still there's your rich tobacco taste of natural leaf wrappers. He's still staring at it. Hey, Jimmy. Go on over and give him an honest cigar. <laughs> gosh, your vega. Still an honest cigar. He's doing it again. It's Suzuki Quadromania time at your participating Suzuki dealers, and it's time to make a free wheeling deal on any one of Suzuki's eight magnificent quads. Price to sell during Quadromania. Come on in, take a free demonstration ride on any of the 1986 quad runners. Purchase one of Suzuki's eight distinctively different quads during Quadromania and get special factory incentives. Financing is available. It's four wheeling fun for the whole family with Suzuki's quad runners at these participating Suzuki dealers. Suzuki foremost in four wheeling. We still have a little time here at halftime. You see the score, and uh, while we have this chance, let me remind you again that there are tickets uh, available for the Indiana Classic down here in Bloomington. That's December 13th and 14th. An opportunity for you to see the Hoosiers where you might not have an opportunity because of season tickets being taken by uh, the regulars. So you can get those tickets. And for some of other Indiana games, for instance, December 21st with Iowa State, January 2nd with Michigan and January 5th against Michigan State. These are all times when the students are off campus. The tickets are $8 and $4 for each game, and they can be ordered through the athletic ticket office in Assembly Hall. And don't forget, too, that tickets are available, will be available, and John and I will tell you when, for the Hoosier Classic. That's at Market Square Arena up in Indianapolis. That will be the 27th and 28th, right after Christmas, December 27th and 28th. Okay, still waiting for both the teams to come back on the court. And, uh, John, let me ask you very quick. Kent State is coming out right now. The Golden Flash is coached by Jim McDonald in his fourth year. What would you imagine that uh, McDonald might tell his boys being down by 10, John? Well, they got down early, and then they came back toward the end. I think he's got to be pretty pleased with the way they scrapped in. But more importantly, the players themselves have confidence that they can stay with Indiana. And uh, for Indiana, what would Knight say? He's got to get the defense better uh, oriented to stop that cut down the middle. Here they come. And that's the whole key. you got to keep the guards out of the middle, and you'll shut them down uh, offensively. All right, Joe Smith, you stay on top of these statistics, and we'll be back with second half action right after these messages. 
I've always been able to tell the stage my husband's going through by the kind of car he drives. First, it was the anti-establishment phase. Then, <laughs> the family man. Next, climbing the corporate ladder. Lots of different cars, lots of different lifestyles. But every car we've owned has been protected by Farm Bureau Insurance. Hey, baby, what do you think? I think they call this the midlife crisis. I don't really work here. In fact, I've been at GTE for 10 years. I'm a GTE account manager. But he's here a lot, making sure our GTE phone system meets our needs. I'm the only one they ever have to call, but I can call on hundreds of specialists. When we expanded, he helped us get into the market quilt network and even use our phones to open new accounts. This business depends on telecommunications. That's my job. Christmas is just around the bend, bringing gifts from True Value Hardware Stores. The Toastmaster Snack Center cooks, heats, and serves snacks on the same platter. The Polynex Electronic Air Cleaner with Ionizer will remove smoke, dust, and pollen from the air. And the Compact Food Processor by Hamilton Beach will save precious time by slicing, shredding, and chopping in seconds. You'll find these great gifts at participating True Value Hardware Stores. When I was a kid, I worked one whole summer to save $5 for a football. <laughs> Talk about learning the value of a dollar. Now I have more to save. And AFNB gives me the advantage of more ways to save it safely. More people save more money, more ways at American Fletcher National Bank. The advantage is yours. AFNB, that's the place for my money. Tonight on Super Football Saturday Night, the Georgia Bulldogs face the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech. The action starts at 8 here on WTTV Channel 4. John, there's a fan that has the best of two worlds. He wants to watch that replay. Okay. All set. Statistically, John, free throws and rebounds belong to Kent State. Well, you can't ask for better shooting, though. Indiana 72%. Kent State's at 53. Look at the free throws. Indiana's 10 of 11. Look at that rebounding. Indiana with nine rebounds. Kent State with 17 rebounds. We talked in the check game how much Indiana had improved their rebounding, and here they go right away. Uh, a lot of those offensive rebounds, which enables Kent State to get that easy basket. Uh, turnovers, uh, Indiana with a slight advantage. And look at the fouls. Indiana with 14 fouls. Uh, Kent State with eight. If Indiana keeps at that pace, that could come into play later in the second half. Early game jitters, Joe Smith, do you think? Well, I tell you one thing, a lot of the advantage there were those second and third shots, and Kodalak certainly showed his strength. You know, he's not all that big, but he had seven boards to, to lead everyone in that first half, so we're just going to have to do a better, better job of denying off the glass and see what we can do. And I think you hit it. You fans out home, keep your eye on Kodalak, number 34, Worsh, number 50. They were the two that got inside most frequently. See how well Indiana can keep them off the boards this time. You can play good defense and force a bad shot, but if you don't block out and they're able to get the rebound and put it right back up for a layup, that good defensive play uh, uh, was, wor was wasted. And I'm sure Coach talked about the defense inside and more about the rebounding. And it looks like Coach is going to keep Callaway now in the lineup. He had a great first half. It'll be Winston and Stevie Alford at the guards, Callaway and Andre Harris at the forwards, and Daryl Thomas to play center. Kent State contests the inbounds pass to start the second half, and it will be Winston Morgan making a drive on the far side, and Kodalak makes a good adjustment. So Morgan brings it back on top. Indiana getting things underway to start the second half, and the turnaround by Harris is off to the front of the rim, and Worsh is there again with the rebound. It's a good shot. He posted up, faked to the left, came back into the middle, had a nice 10-footer, and just didn't get the roll. Tool. And inside it goes to Worsh over Thomas. Worsh has the shot. He has to be fronted just a little bit more than that. Thomas did an excellent job in holding his position, but he's got to get a hand up in his face. Morgan. And here's a steal. Morgan just didn't see that one coming and should have. Good timing on that play by Mike Roberts. There's a couple of turnovers, a bad shot and a rebound, and then the steal, and it's a new game. This is where Indiana's got to come to grips with themselves. Kent State jumps right out in this half, and, and things are not looking good for Indiana. Inside to Morgan at the line. Back to Thomas, and they call traveling on Thomas. Pulled that pivot foot up. Another costly mistake by Indiana. He makes a great fake there and gets Kent State to move toward the baseline, but then 
His foot drags, and uh, that's a travel. And there's a good look at the turnovers. There's Tool to the right side. Inside again to worse. There's a hook off the glass. That's a gorgeous shot. And a little switch that time. Winston Morgan ended up guarding worse. And that's just a mismatch, but Kent State saw it right away. Kent State is a well-coached team. You can see that, and they're very high on Jim McDonald at Kent State. In his fourth year, he made the NIT last year. Blocked out of bounds. So Kubini playing the ball as Indiana forced into a trap on the baseline. They'll have the ball back down now with Alford to trigger in, and we have a timeout. Bob Knight wants to settle this down right away. You're watching Indiana basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. The score, Indiana 52, Kent State 48. It takes a lot of coal to run this company. Coal? This is an office, not a factory. All our machines are electric. And it takes coal to produce that electricity. Never thought of it like that. Coal generates more than half the electricity in the United States. It takes coal to make your computer compute, the typewriter type. In fact, on the average, every American uses three tons of coal each year. Amex Coal Company, powering your world. How did you get way out here? That baby will go anywhere. Got it insured? Got Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Good. Now, how about life insurance? I can take care of myself. Okay, but life insurance is a good way to protect your family. Wait, do you hear something? I don't hear anything. Farm Bureau for Auto Insurance, Farm Bureau for Life Insurance. The same agent handles both. Well, it uh, could have been bears. Good look at Coach Bob Knight in his 15th year. 315 wins, 107 losses here at Indiana alone. First games are very important for Indiana, John. We haven't done too well last couple of years. The well, last we? two years, Miami beat us two years ago. Louisville beat us last year, and... Uh, uh, after Coach won his first 12 openers, he's lost two in a row. They have a blocking foul underneath on Kodalak as the scramble off that missed shot for Alford resulted in a foul. Russ Kodalak called for his second of the first of the second half on either team. All right, this is where we talked about uh, we need some leadership and then we need somebody to come out there and say, look, guys, uh, this team's within four points of us now. We got to take control of this situation. Let's see if uh, if somebody comes to the top for that. Callaway from well outside. That's 18 feet, and Ricky Callaway shows his range as he hits for his 14th point. But nonetheless, Indiana has been forced to shoot from outside. The underneath shot's been taken away. It's a good break for Indiana on the block by Harris. But the inside game's been taken away temporarily, John. Well. If that's the case, you've got to dump the ball back outside. We've got the shooters this year, and Steve Alford and Callaway from the outside. You can only take what the other team gives you. And a foul. This is going to go against Kent State, and I believe Tool. And if it is against Tool, that will be his fourth. Now things turning around a little bit for Indiana. There you see number 30, Londell Owens. He'll come in for Tool. That's his fourth foul, so he'll have to wait a while to come back in. Out of bounds to Indiana. Londell, very athletic on a wiry frame. 6-1 from Annapolis, Maryland. He's a sophomore. Kent State zones on the out of bounds. So it looks like a 2-3 now. Almost walked. No call. Morgan now playing the point against the 2-3. Callaway, that will not fall, and Harris almost with a mistake going up over the back of Kubini as Russ came down with the ball. Here's steal by Callaway. Lob inside. Wirch has it knocked away, and there's good help. Wirch with a little sag on that lob, and he had open, really open territory to the basket, and Andre Harris reacted. Well, if Daryl Thomas is going to cover from the front, that means somebody's got to help him from the backside against that lob pass. Delray did, or, um, Andre Harris did that time. And Callaway on the inbounds deflected it out of the hands of Roberts. Hey, they, they have a myriad of plays Kent State does. Ways they can bring the ball, way they can, they can attack John, and those two guards make it all happen. There's a turnover. One of the 
few turnovers we've had in this contest, but Cabini picked his feet up. I think you can tell a lot about uh, Coach McDonald's style of play here. It's his fourth year, and each year the team's progressed. They've gone to the NIT, and again, they've got to be a, a real contender in that MAC conference this year. On the line, Thomas over the bench. He just went over Jim McDonald. I don't know. Coach McDonald looked like he had some pretty good hands there as he, ca as he caught Darrell coming in there. I, I think you can tell he's a basketball player in his day. McDonald's record at Kent State, 48 and 40. He's had three winning seasons. That's pretty good. Owens, Morgan, tries to go shoulder to shoulder with him and picks up the foul. And so Winston is in trouble now. His fourth. Winston with a good scoring half in the first half. And now we'll see Stu Robinson for Morgan. Kent State has beaten Indiana on the drive to the basket. It, it's not even the pass anymore. It's it's just a guy one on one getting around our defense and, and creating trouble as he gets to the basket. Mondell Owens, 80% shooter from the strike. Little unorthodox appearance, well, but that's uh, he gets it done, doesn't he? See how he lined up there. Let's get a shot of his feet if we can. I don't know if our cameraman can hear us, but he's uh, pigeon-toed. He's got his feet pointed in toward the center. Look at that. And not the way that uh, fundamentally you teach that, but if the guy's shooting 80% and he just made two there, uh, who are we to say anything about? We don't change. That's right. <laughs> Pressure on the ball. Robinson clears it to Callaway. Now Indiana leading by four. Led by 10 at halftime. Kent State has closed the gap. Stu picked a dribble up, almost got in trouble that time. Good pass there. There we go. And a foul as he goes up. Worsh will pick up his first, sending Harris to the line, but Andre missed the stuff. All right, the real key is Stu creating trouble inside, forcing the uh, odd man situation so that you've got two offensive players and one defensive man to guard him. It started with Stu Robinson getting two guys to guard him, and then two consecutive passes left Harris open inside. Andre, one of two from the charity stride in the first half, and uh, watching him in practice, this is probably an area he's really going to have to work on. And they've been trying to smooth his shot out a little bit. He is so strong, gets the roll on this one. So he's two for four, and his tenth point. 55-50, Indiana. And now Kent State tries to get into that margin. There's the turnaround. Harris high for the ball. Loses his balance and right up off the glass. Missing the shot. Hooks up off the glass. Loose ball. Look at this. Indiana can't come up with it. And boy, that brings Bob Knight up. Mike Roberts comes out with the ball. Roberts had a cripple. Missed it. And then Indiana couldn't come up with the ball. There's a drive that time. Callaway stopped it. Now Roberts sets it back up again. And a foul. Nope. Offensive foul that time. Yes. Offensive foul. 42 on the blue, they say. So that's Ray Cobaini's first. The junior from Clarkston, Michigan. Held to six points in the first half, but averages nine. It's tough for Indiana just come up with a rebound. It seems they're all just batted away or knocked away, and Kent State's able to recover. Alford forced that one up over Roberts. Thomas tries to pick the ball up. Roberts is across that line, and Indiana isn't back yet. Worsh on the alley oop. That's a great assist from Roberts. Worsh has a dozen. Galloway almost throws it away and a foul underneath holding against Kent State. Well, Kent State has already committed five. And this one is against Owens. Londell getting caught behind his player and decides to hang on. Kent State is uh, just a scrappy team. We mentioned that spurt at the end of the half will give them their confidence and they've got it. They they know they can stay with Indiana. Now they've gone to that zone again on out-of-bounds play. And there's a kick. That'll be Indiana's ball. Rebounding so far in the half. Uh, Kent State has six rebounds. Indiana without a rebound yet. Harris, uh, Andre Harris had one, but it got knocked away from him. 
Robinson tries to work it out. There's Owens right on him. And a lot of passes inside. Nobody seemed to be ready for that one. Now that yep. was the lob play, but Kent State had a defense. Harris had to get rid of it. And a turnover for Indiana. Now Kent State with a chance to pull within one. Owens. As they cut down through the middle again, this time by Kodalak. Kodalak gets the ball. Two points. Mike Roberts with 14 to lead for a tie. Ricky Callaway has leading scores for each team. 55-54. Callaway with a good post move, a feed, and an assist from Harris. Harris with a good look inside. You see how smooth Callaway looked. A better job of defense at the other end, although Kent State made the shot, and then very good offense for Indiana. Now Kent State trailing by three. Watch the ball. Works. There's the backside cut. Knocked out of bounds. Foul on Harris. There you see a good look at Daryl Thomas and Andre Harris. That's uh, Andre's first foul. He was the man helping out there. There you see the Indiana bench. Joby Wright. Thomas with a good steal. The pass inbounds to Wirtz, and Thomas just stepped in front. Now the Hoosiers blocking foul. That goes against Kent State, and Jim McDonald almost fell off the floor. He didn't agree with that one. Stevie Alford on the dribble that time. He caught Roberts moving. Be well, a block out of bounds. Here's a look. And there you see McDonald's reaction. Robinson. Boy, he wanted to go to Thomas on that one. Here's Callaway off the high. Alford. There's a great feed and a foul. The basket is good. Roberts has picked up his second foul, and Steve will go to the line. Now Indiana's into the offense. A little more like I think they want to. The simple down pick. Alford comes out. Pick went down. All right, let's watch inside. Daryl Thomas went to set the pick. The shot by Stevie is good, and then the foul on Roberts as uh, as he went by trying to deflect the ball. Alford has 13, and Jim McDonald wants timeout with 13 minutes remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana leads Kent State 60 to 54. The house I grew up in held a lifetime of love and hope and wonderful memories. Now I'm buying a home for my family to grow up in. Got the mortgage where Dad went. American Fletcher. Get your mortgage from the bank that puts more people in more homes than any bank in Indiana. American Fletcher. The advantage is yours. American Fletcher, thanks for the memories. You can buy a lot of things with credit cards. You can cash checks with most of them. Some can even get you cash. Now there's one card that can do all that and more. A new card that doesn't charge a membership fee. One with no charge for extra cards. A card that offers you extra savings on products and services. Introducing the Hooks Promise card. Hooks Promise is as good as gold. Apply for yours today. 60-54, there's the score. Indiana by a half dozen, but Joe Smith, statistically, the pendulum has swung in favor of the Golden Flashes. And rebounding's definitely been the key. They've out-rebounded this Chuck 6-1, to one, and uh, Kent's hitting 5 of 9 the second half for 55-6, and for the game, 55-2. So they're playing it at both ends. 13-09 remaining in this contest, and Kent State with the ball. It'll be Londell Owens, the senior from Annapolis, to bring it up. To Roberts. Kodalak sets the screen Roberts or Owens takes the shot no good and Harris we have a jump ball as Harris and Cabini went high for it and Cabini over the back nonetheless uh, tied Harris up 
And the ultimate nice position save gives on the that ultimate. ball to uh, Kent State again. Right. Looking underneath, out to Wurch. He's accurate from there, and you see why. Great shooting on great form. Terry Wurch adds his two. 60-56. Now Indiana tries to set it up. Careless mistakes now can prove very costly. Guards are very quick. So Indiana has to play methodically to get the opportunities. And on the drive, Robinson is fouled behind the free throw line. That will go against Owens, his fourth. Coach talked in a pregame show about trying not to keep the offense low. Uh, he wanted up about the second line there on the free throw area. But in that situation, Indiana was was inside. Looked like uh, Callaway had an opening to the basket a couple times, but yet the Kent State defense was playing low enough so he couldn't get the pass to him. Indiana may want to try to bring that offense out a little higher and enable that back cut if Kent State continues to overplay. A freshman replaces a senior. Reggie Adams from Cleveland, Ohio, number 20 for Owens, who picked up his fourth foul. Mm, tipped up in the end. Oh, Harris. There's... We, we say he covers a lot of range, John. We talked about that in the Czechoslovakian game. He not only goes up vertically, but he has such a great reach and body control. He just barely had a hand is about all he had in the uh, in the area of play that time. Thomas knocks it away. And we have a foul before a basket. It will go against Indiana. And uh, Daryl Thomas has dislocated a finger. We could see that here. Dr. Brad Bomba is out to take a look at the hand. Daryl in excruciating pain and I had that happen to me one time John playing baseball I was catcher on a baseball team on a legion ball team he's right back in you see him oh. put his arm around Brad let's take a look inside here the lob pass Harris a little late the rebound Kent State battles again Indiana just cannot come up there's and, where he does uh, it looks like right there he did you see he ran right over the bench and uh, Dr. Brad Bamba did a did a quick job right there and put him right back in the game Well, there's nothing that hurts as badly that can be corrected as quickly. It'll be stoved up for a while, though. Offensive foul. Good move by Thomas. Good play that time. Worst trying to make that drive to the left. Darrell not giving the position up. The referee right there with the call. Now things are turning a little bit. I think Indiana is picking up on the uh, on the momentum. Jim Mangapora replaces Wurst. Terry getting a rest now. The junior from Elyria, Ohio with 14 points. Harris looking for a cut. There it is by Robinson. Misses the shot over the top. Loose ball. Jump ball. It'll be Indiana's possession this time. Looked like the offense was higher that time as Robinson was able to make the back cut. And then Mr. Layup, see the good pass there. He goes right in and just can't get it. But now a rebound by Daryl. As Robinson comes down, he wipes Daryl's feet out from under him. Should be Indiana ball. All right, Harris. Indiana tries to set it up again. Thomas not appearing to be tentative handling that ball, although it was his right hand before. He'll fire. He doesn't get the drop of the ball. And what do we have? A pushing foul. It's going against Indiana. Harris. Who had underneath position, it appeared, but Kubaini was able to find him off, and Harris committed the foul. Stevie with the pass inside. Darrell with good form here. Let's watch underneath. Boy, that's close. Foul on Harris there. Looked like both of them were just leaping up for the ball. 11 14 remaining. It's 62 56. Indiana by six. Underneath, Daryl Thomas again with good anticipation that's, to Alford. That's his fifth steal of the game, Chuck. Drive. Score. Foul. That's where your defensive play at one end leads right to the offensive play at the other. The steal by Daryl. He gets it to the right man. Now watch Stevie Alford. Here's the leadership we talked about. Fake left, go right. And there you go with the layup and a foul. Now, uh, Tom will be at the line. Thomas has come over. Tim Garl, the trainer, has uh, sprayed just a, a little 
adhesive adherent on the finger now, now and wrapping that finger. They may be cooling the finger yeah, a little bit, put too. Put a little cold on there, and now you wrap it up to, next to a good finger so that you can't bend that finger back. It's got to really hurt him if somebody touches that or the ball hits it or something. So at that free throw, uh, they, Tim Garl, the trainer, called him over. They taped it up. He's ready to play. Well, he has improved so much over one year. Daryl Thomas, about whom we're speaking. Mangapura. Step up by Kodalak, and it doesn't go. Look at this. Callaway just crashes from outside for that board. Alford, and a foul. And this is going against number 20, Reggie Adams. Both Adams and 30 Owens were on the tackle. All right, watch for 20, Callaway. Look how far away he is. And he works his way inside to come up with that rebound, and then he protects the ball. Now, that's the way to get a rebound. He dishes right out to Steve. Now, that's twice now. Steve's brought the ball up the floor and tried to create things the first time with three-point play, and now he's got a chance for two free throws. Steve has 17. 18 make that after we set a slow start, but it was not slow because of his choice. It was just that Indiana's low game was working well, and the forwards were getting the shots. He has 19 to lead both teams, and Indiana has jumped back to an 11-point lead, 67-56, after a threat right. by the Golden Flashes. Here's a near steal by Galloway. Elected not to chase the ball. There's a back cut kicked away. Look how quick, though, Mike Roberts is. Feed Galloway. Steve Alford to Ricky Calloway, and Calloway has 18. And this crowd of 12,525 begins to ignite. And I think the flames lit. It's good defense and then quick offense. It's got the crowd going now. It'll be Kent State's ball, but again, good defense as Stu Robinson sagged back off his man, closed up, and stopped the drive by Roberts. Indiana's stopping that guard cut inside. Look at the turnovers now. A little, a little more equal. Six for Kent State. Indiana with five in this half. Kodalak found himself in traffic, takes it out. Oh, that's a good delay and the crash from outside and Mangapora. Now look at, the, the look at the, what happened there. Stevie Alford is the one that had to block out Mangapora because of that switch. Here's the play. Harris misses him. So now Steve Alford's the one that blocks out, and that shows you guards at home. If you've got the position, that center has to go over your back, and, and if you're lucky, you'll get that foul call against you. Close game at Georgia Tech. Michigan 49, Georgia Tech 44. 49-44 for Michigan wins today. Alford on the second of a one and one, and it's good. He has 21. 90% shooter, 91% from the line last year. And on his way again. Near steal as Harris really tried to close it off and the foul no they say traveling before the shot Callaway can't leave his feet in that situation coach McDonald did not agree with that at all but uh, Stevie goes for the steal now Callaway's leaving his feet against a five foot ten player and the call was traveling give the ball to Indiana Thomas you could hear Alford calling for Darrell he had a moment but Darrell didn't see Oh, that's good play by Robinson coming back for the ball there. And travel against Alford. Little head fake and slid his foot. And he had the move. Steve's trying to create some things there. You can see it. Look at his eye. He's moving for the ball. You heard him call Daryl. So he wants Daryl to come down and pick for him to get him open. A little aggressive that time. And caused Indiana the turnover. Indiana will host Notre Dame. It's coming Tuesday night. Notre Dame a winner over Butler today, 87-56. Game time is 7.30. Air time is... 7.30, we hope that you'll plan to join John Laskowski, Joe Smith, and me for all the action. We have eight and a half left here. 
a good move. Post up by Reggie Adams coming up off baseline, his first basket. And it's 71 58. Callaway up off the glass and the blocking foul as Callaway took it to the board on Mangapura, his third. That'll send Ricky to the line. Ricky from Withrow High School in Cincinnati. Well, he was just about everybody's All-American. Well, he scored 18 points in his first game at Indiana without starting. Looks like he's in the into the pattern of the offense. He knows what he's supposed to do, and there you see a great one-on-one -on -one move to draw the foul. But John, if he has not just sort of found a game and has swung himself into the offense as a freshman with his abilities, he can be a great asset. He sure could. He's quick, he rebounds well, and he, and he can be good on defense. If the other team's got that, that big offensive threat, he's got to learn to stay with it. Owens out for the loose ball and gets the move on Callaway and just gets, Callaway gets a shoulder behind him and that's all they need, John. Well, Kent State does a good job. I think, uh, I think this is gonna be a good team in that MAC conference this year. Thomas, see what he can do with the ball. Bad hand and all, but he puts it up. Daryl Thomas, his first basket of the second half. He has 10. Scoring balance for Indiana pretty even in the first half. There's Owens again. Oh, my. Great shot by Russ Kodalak. He has 14. Kodalak, a 42% shooter from the field, and he's done a pretty good job. We have a foul inside. It's going to be offensive against Andre Harris. Apparently a moving pick or a block of some sort. His third foul, and we have a timeout on that foul. You are watching Indiana Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The score, Indiana 75. Kent State 62. Give me a light. <laughs> a Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer. Hey, can I have a light? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Uh, no, a uh, Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Oh, ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. I'll never forget the day we moved into our first home. What a day! All we really had was about... a watercolor that we got on our honeymoon. Well, we've lived in lots of different houses since then, but they've had one thing in common. They've all been protected by a homeowner's policy from Farm Bureau Insurance. Over the fireplace. Oh. <laughs> Actually, they've had two things in common. Well, as uh, you have at least one blonde in your family, don't you? That's Laura, my daughter Laura, and my wife Jackie, and they're saying, hello, go IU. Okay. I thought I saw a high daddy there. Might, might have been a high daddy there also. <laughs> 7 16, clock running. Kent State with the ball. The golden flashes are down, 62 75. They were as close as three. Uh, field goal percentages. Pretty good look at that. Harris with the loose ball. Quick outlet. And uh, threw it away from the basket. So Robinson had to hold up. Oh, what a stuff. No basket. No basket. That looked like uh, Andre Harris. A good shot by Stevie. All right, good camera angle here. Watch Andre. He sneaks around. Oh, it's off the rim. I think the official might have missed that one, John. Throws it right back in. Boy, that's a, it's a, such a quick play. You don't expect it. And then, and then you got to make the call right away. Coach shaking his head. I don't think he agreed with it either. Offensive goaltending on a spectacular play by the leaping Andre Harris. And now he closes up on Owen. Here's an outside shot, and it's right on target. Mike Roberts has 16. That's the shot you want him to take, though. That's a 20-footer with a guy in his face. Now, Robert's shooting percentage is not that good. 33%. Here's a bad pass stolen by Kent State. They're on a roll again. And up off the glass, Kubini banks it in for his first second-half basket. It's 
a nine point lead as Kent State has four unanswered points after this last timeout. And there's going to be a foul against Owens hooking with his knee. Londell Owens has fouled out according to our statistics with 613 remaining. He and Callaway are really battling inside there. Owens is six foot two, 140 pounds, so he just really doesn't have the, the size to work against Callaway. Number 24, Roy Ware, 6'2 sophomore from Toledo, replaces Londell Owens. Callaway with the first of one and one misses, and the outstretched arms of Ware handling the ball for the first time pulls down the rebound. Now Kent State trying to work in on the high post to Cabini. And off Cabini's shoulder. This ball has taken a lot of errant bounces today, John. It seems like it's just never coming to Indiana. Or Indiana's never able to come up with the ball. We're causing the, some mishandlement of the ball, but uh, we haven't come up with it a lot yet. Robinson picked up by Tool at the 10-second line. Callaway. Indiana playing more of an off an emotion offense now as Thomas moves in. Oh, look at this. Now he pulls it down with one hand. Andre Harris gets two hands on it. He's still in the air and stuffs it. He's going to be a great uh, attribute to our uh, offensive rebounding. Hard shot off the glass. No good. And Robinson wisely gives it back to Harris and gets it right back or he did double dribble he bounced the ball a couple of times on that loose opportunity before he gained control Harris well after a couple of good shots inside he sort of felt his oats from about 15 feet didn't he this is almost a time when you want to use that 45 second clock just under five minutes to play take about 30 seconds each time you get the ball it's an 11 point lead uh, but stranger things have happened Tool on Alford. Gets the drive and a blocking foul called on Thomas. He was over, but he was moving. Tool can really handle the ball that time as he gets around Steve. Watch this behind the back. And now he's going to his left. And Daryl not there quick enough. There's the block. It was the sixth foul against Indiana, so there's still one out of the one and one. Where? Pushes Callaway off. Good reverse move, and Ware takes it through and loses the ball out of bounds. Indiana. They have they have good reverse moves, John. They bring they're so quick. They bring the ball out. They just switch hands, turn down toward the basket, and they leave Indiana. They've caused Indiana a lot of trouble today. Uh, Indiana now up by 11, though. Joe, statistically, has Indiana improved any off the board second half? Well, I think uh, the thing it had, yes, Chuck, it's 13 to uh, 9 in the second half. Still getting beat for the game, 30 to 18, but uh, they're denying that second shot to Kent State. Alford inside, dishes back to Thomas, and Thomas is hooked as he goes. He'll move to the line. Mike Roberts will be called for the foul. He is third. Bob Knight in a, uh, uh, what color do you call that? Magenta? A what? Purple? That's purple. Well, is that purple? Know, okay, yeah. all right. Well, I don't know. A sweater, that's one of a myriad he has. The man must have about 100 sweaters. Daryl Thomas, stoved fingers and all at the line, and they didn't seem to bother his concentration as he puts that one in. That is no good. And the rebound to Kent State. Kubini chasing it down. Indiana has five players and double figures. We're four minutes from the end of this game. And back alone. Quick hands and sure hands of Mike Roberts pulls that one. Again, not able to come up with that ball on the uh, after the missed shot. There it is again, loose. Oh, that's an easy two, and he misses the shot. But a foul on Robinson. Here's the drive again left. A long pass outside. Stu with the contact. The shot's missed, but it'd be two shots. 
Second foul on Robinson. Russ Kodalak. Medina, Ohio, a 6'5 junior. Here's the second. He has 16 points. And we have timeout with 338 remaining. You're watching Indiana Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana leads by 10, 78-68. Come on, we gotta get going. Give me your car keys. What? Give me your car keys. I'm driving. Relax, will ya? I'm okay. Then how come you're slurring my words? Oh, sorry. A guy your size is legally drunk after a few beers. What about a guy your size? Ooh, one beer and I'm stiff as a board. So that's why you only had a soft drink, huh? That's right. You gotta drive. Don't drink. You wanna know something? What's that? You're pretty smart. Yeah. For a dummy. This message brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance and your Indiana State Police. Why shop all over town for a good deal on a used car when Dave McIntyre, Chevrolet and Isuzu Center keeps over 250 clean used cars and trucks in stock, priced from only $1,500 to $7,500. And most people qualify for GMAC financing with just $240 down. Shop the dealer who sells thousands of clean used cars and trucks. Dave McIntyre, Chevrolet and Isuzu Center, your one-stop used car headquarters. Seeing that flag, John, reminds me several years ago of the technical foul that was called against the cheerleaders. I think you remember that as well as I. And They've timed their routine a little better now, to a minute. They know when to get out. Of course, it's <laughs> late in the game, and I think they always do that cheer late in the game, yeah. and all the coaches want to take all that 60 seconds in the huddle, so that's the time to do it. Let's look at some of that shooting. 8 of 17 for Indiana, 47% this half. Kent State's 11 of 22 at even 50, so both teams shooting a little less percentage. Team fouls. Kent State with 15 in this half. Indiana with just seven, so that's been a difference. Rebounding still, Indiana with 10. Kent State with uh, 12. Indiana essentially is playing with three guards, Callaway, Robinson, and Alford, but uh, any one of these five on the court can handle the ball well. You would not really want Harrison Thomas to go too far with it, and there it is, knocked out of the hands. Good pressure on the ball on the blind side, and Kent State comes up with the theft. They're trailing by 10 with three minutes remaining. Here's that lob to Wirtz. And uh, intimidation, I think, is probably the cause of that missed shot. Thomas high in the air, and Wirtz just pushed it over the glass. Galloway. Oh, that's a beautiful basket. And the foul will go against Kodalak, his third. Callaway's creating the action uh, here in this second half. He takes a drive. There's three players around him, and he uses that body control to get that basket. Boy, he's an excitable player, too. You see how, how happy he is he makes that shot, and now he's got a chance at the free throw line. Well, Ricky's having an excellent game, and he adds one more. That's just sort of icing. 23 points for Ricky Callaway. Good freshman start. All our freshmen should start that way, John. That'd be great. Tool, no good. Kodalak, and he suddenly remembered he couldn't move, <laughs> but it was too late. Well, Indiana forces that outside shot, and, but then when it's missed, Kent State comes up with a rebound there. The turnover prevented a shot. Uh, obviously, between this game and Notre Dame game on Tuesday, Indiana's going to have to uh, figure out this rebounding situation. Galloway. Inside, there's Harris. That He loves that turnaround. Misses this one a little strong. And it's going to be against Winston Morgan going for the loose ball. And Morgan will promptly sit down again because we have him for five. Harris well, might have uh, turned the wrong way that time, Chuck. It looked like he pivoted out toward the free throw line it making it about a seven eight foot shot he pivoted toward the basket he's got about a three or four foot shot Todd Meyer I watch the play inside now see he's open there turn into the basket but yet he turns away the other side and there's Winston coming in with the foul well we have two minutes 21 seconds remaining Bill tool averaging 17 points through the first two games 
and he has three. And we have a foul. Kubini with his third all in the second half. I think Indiana is going to have to really improve in the concentration going for the loose ball John because that with uh, the missed free throw should never have come into the hands of Kubini. Offensive rebound that time. Uh, Daryl did come up with a rebound on the second shot though. But as you pointed out earlier uh, anyone from that range given 50 percent opportunities sooner or later right. is going to hit them. Daryl Thomas from Westchester Illinois and even dozen make that 13 Thomas has 13 Harris has 14 Alford 21 Winston Morgan 11 he's fouled out and Ricky Callaway 23 outside by Kubini 83 71 Scoring is not as prolific here in the second half. It was 52-42 at halftime. Alford, oh, does he know how to use the glass? Good move as he glides in there. I, he does a great job of looking for that board, and he gets that soft roll off the rim. Indiana trying to shore up this man-to-man -man offensive foul before the basket, and then who goes down again but Daryl Thomas. He's like, taking a beating underneath the basket. He's right. got a smile on his face now. Well, I think Andre leaped up to block that shot and came down on Daryl's stomach. So he, he's not really upset with uh, Andre. It just hurts. <laughs> I, I think that's academic. Well, I think that would hurt. Well, if you're it's right. Kent, if it's the opponent, well, you get mad because you don't <laughs> want the right. guy stepping on. If it's right. your own teammate, well, you got you got to laugh and say, "Boy, it still hurts, so coach." <laughs> I think this is where Daryl's really improved a lot. Now we're seeing it only in the first game. I hope everybody understands that, but he has so much more confidence and his technique at the line is so much better, John. He's going to be the center this year and uh, he's got to learn a position he's probably not used to, at least defensively. 128 inside the 90 second mark. Here's Alford on the steal. Good deflection by Callaway and it's almost taken back again. What do we have? Travel. Yeah, finally. I thought Steve traveled a little before that. Good hustle. Reggie Adams created that turnover as he caught Steve from behind. 87-71. This game belongs to the Hoosiers leading by 16, but uh, there's an area Indiana has to improve. First half was, was played well at just six turnovers. But the second half already 10, so that's 16 for the game. Well, immediately Roberts comes right over and goes shoulder to shoulder with Steve Alford. Bounce inside, just turn around, uh, no good. Strong off the back of the rim. 47 seconds remaining. Roberts tries it from well outside. Alford draws the foul, and that's going to send him back to the line again as Cabini commits his fourth. Steve makes a good play on that drive to the basket. He's going against a player about 6'6", and yet at 6'2", the one thing he does is leave the ground with both feet. He gets both feet under himself and then leans in toward the basket for that shot. It's a little unorthodox, but he knows he protects the ball a lot better that way, and, and when you shoot free throws like he does, he knows that if he can get to the line, uh, he's got a good chance at two points. Steve, with that free throw, leads both teams with 24 points and point number 25. Good opening contest for Indiana substitution. Delray Brooks for Steve Alford. He'll get a slap on the back from Coach Knight, who maybe rather than pat him on the back, is going to talk to him for a minute. Really hasn't been too much consistency in this game, has there, John, Joe? Well, that's the big thing so far, Chuck. It's uh, Indiana's played well in spurts, but uh, you've got to play well uh, over the period of the 40 minutes or you're going to run into some problems this year. Okay, Delray Brooks for Steve Alford, who leaves with 25 points, and we have 35 seconds remaining. On the drive, Reggie Adams. He'll fire, he'll score. Reggie, 44% shooter from outside with his fourth point. Delray across the line. Adams just picks him up. 
Almost drags the foot. Now back out to Todd Meyer. A little give and go. Look at this. And loose off the hand. Boy, they had it set up. Harris was coming in from baseline. I just couldn't hang on to it. Steal. Daryl Thomas. No basket. No basket. The buzzer sounds before Daryl Thomas's basketball through. And we've come to the end of the game. The final score, Indiana 89. The Kent State Golden Flashes 73. And we'll be back to check on the scoring and review today's game in just a minute. I know it hurts. And right now, it might be hard to understand. The scoreboard might not say so. But you won tonight. And you won something far more important than just a game. So I just saw a bunch of my kids play their hearts out for 32 minutes. You gave it everything. You didn't hold back. That's desire, pride, personal achievement. You measure these things on a different kind of scoreboard. You measure these things right here. Boy, counts. These are the victories we won tonight. These are the reasons we play the game. Oaks believes there's more to sports than just good health. The lessons we learn from athletics last a lifetime. Final score, 89-73. Leading score for the game, Steve Alford with 25. Ricky Calloway with 23 for Indiana. Andre Harris had 14. Daryl Thomas, 15. After dislocating his finger, came up with a couple of baskets. And not a bad opportunity. There uh, are the fouls in this game, and that's the area, I think, John, that Indiana is really going to have to look at as they come into Notre Dame next Tuesday night. They improved a lot there in the second half, but uh, rebounding was the big thing. We talked about it a lot. Notre Dame's going to come in here and obviously uh, hit the boards well. Uh, Indiana just didn't seem to come up with that ball a lot. But you got to look at Ricky Calloway's uh, performance, his first game as an Indiana player. He does not start, comes in a game, and just plays excellently. Uh, very few mistakes, if any. And you got to look at him to play a lot in the Notre Dame game. Joe Indiana improved that uh, rebounding a little bit there in the late going of the second half. No question in the second half. They still held the advantage 18 to 14. And for the game, Chuck, unofficially, they outboarded us 35 to 23. And as John was mentioning, you know, Notre Dame just roughed us up on the boards last year. Royal, in particular, had 12 or 13 in that ball game. He got quite hot in the second half. We shot well today, 31 of 50 for 62 uh, percent. Kent State 48-3 on 29 of 60. So uh, the shooting improved. And that was one constant thing uh, throughout the 40 minutes. We welcome all you stations who have joined us for the upcoming high school game, and we will continue with our post-game show from Assembly Hall in just a minute. A uh, red-tailed hawk? This belongs to a golden eagle. Oh. Come along, Mr. Porter. Uh, <laughs> In every aspect, the Limberloss was a treacherous swamp. And the terrain beyond it was rugged, filled with every animal and human danger known in the Central States. But despite all the obstacles, we finally discovered the treasure we'd been searching for. Author. Photographer, friend of the outdoors, Gene Stratton Porter, another Indiana legend, brought to you with pride by Farm Bureau Insurance. Joe Smith, you have the official rebounds now, huh? Well, still unofficial. Uh, we haven't received the official yet, but uh, individually today, uh, Harris had four rebounds, all of them in the second half, and three assists, a steal and a block. Uh, Daryl Thomas had five rebounds, but he had six steals. Uh, three of those, uh, well, three in each half. And also quite active today for the Hoosiers was Steve Alford with uh, three rebounds, three assists, and three steals. For Kent State, uh, Russ Kodalak had nine boards, but if you recall, he had seven in the first 20 minutes. And uh, Kubaney had a strong second half on the boards when he pulled down seven to end with seven uh, for the ball game. And Terry Worsh also had seven. Again, 35-23, Chuck. Rebounding-wise, Kent State, and obviously that's a concern, I know, to Coach Knight. High point honors for Kent State went to 
Mike Roberts with uh, 16. Terry Worsh has 14. 14, 16 also from Kodalak. And uh, 10 from Ray Kubini. They, they are really strong. They have good balance scoring. We will continue with our post-game show after we hear from our local stations. This is the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Sometimes a simple river crossing isn't so simple. And when you've got him back, it's your turn. Boy. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Good job, Bush. Right? Head for the mountains. Without Amex coal, practice would be over. It takes coal to produce the electricity that lights basketball courts all the way from backyards to the NBA. Amex Coal Company. Bet you never thought of us as a basketball power. This Christmas, two words to the wise. Service merchandise. Last year, I got Brenda, Brenda, Baba, Mike, Bill, Rick, Becky, Backpack, and Bonnie, a bar scratcher. <laughs> I need those two words. Service merchandise, where Norelco's rechargeable handheld can opener is just $15.86 after rebate. But what about Jack, Joan, John, and Jenny? Service merchandise. Your store for Norelco's satin collection curlers. Only $20.97 after rebate. And their deluxe Rototrack rechargeable razor, now just $56.97. So this Christmas, it's two words to the wise. Service merchandise. Uh -huh. Now, every Saturday night means the best of big-time college football. Super Football Saturday Night brings you all the excitement of the greatest college teams in action. The battle for Atlanta explodes onto the screen. An ACC powerhouse Georgia Tech clashes with interstate rival Georgia in this dazzling Saturday night special. For the color, action, drama, and excitement of college football, it's Super Football Saturday Night. Good night at 8 on WTTV Channel 4. 89-73, the final score. That 16-point margin, 12 of those coming in the second half of play. Indiana outscoring Kent State at the line by a dozen as the Hoosiers were able to get into the one-and-one one early and move on to, to victory. Opening day, uh, they're back on the winning streak, but a lot of room for improvement. Oh, my. That's the, that's the one thing that we have to look for right now. And uh, we need to control the board a little bit more, as uh, Joe had indicated earlier. So uh, we look forward now to Tuesday night. Any reproduction of this telecast is strictly forbidden without the express written permission of WTTV and Indiana University, which also has approval of the announcers used in this telecast. Now this is Chuck Marlowe for John Laskowski and Joe Smith speaking to you from Assembly Hall, inviting you to join us next Tuesday night at 7.30 when Indiana meets Notre Dame at Assembly Hall. So long, everybody. been watching Indiana University Basketball, brought to you for the 14th consecutive year by Farm Bureau Insurance and its nearly 700 agents throughout the state of Indiana, by American Fletcher National Bank, where the advantage is yours, by your Hooks Dependable Drug Stores, we like to see you smile, by the men and women of Amex Coal Company, a division of Amex Incorporated, a worldwide energy and minerals company. By Bud Light, the light beer with the first name and taste. Everything else is just a light. This telecast was produced through the facilities of WTTV in Indianapolis. Network arrangements by Broadcast Communications Incorporated. This is the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. the battle between the Autobots and the Decepticons rages on. Megatron creates Triple Changers, the most evil Decepticons of all. But the Autobot scientist Perceptor is ready for anything. Introducing Perceptor. From a working microscope, he transforms into a robot. And Triple Changer Blitzwing transforms from tank to plane. And from plane to robot. I know what I want. Triple Changer! Autobots will stop them! Each sold separately from Hasbro, while supplies last. Somewhere out there, the Baron is waiting. 
But you're one of Lakeside's flying devils, and you're ready for action. He spots you first and dives out of the sun, and the dogfight is on. You try every trick. You climb. You dive, but you can't shake him. Now, pour it on, and you're on his tail. This time, he's all yours. But what about next time? With Lakeside's flying devils, it's all up in the air. Coming from the farthest reaches of the universe to challenge the worst villains on Earth are the most powerful heroes ever in the Battle of the Superpowers Collection. Hark! Batman being called to stop a dastardly deed new from Kenner's Superpowers Collection. The Batmobile figures with power action sold separately. Got you, Joker. Don't laugh yet. Release the war. It's a trap. Activate Batman. Trouble, Batman? Not my Batmobile. On me face, too. Is this the end of our heroes in the Batmobile? You decide. Ever worry how your do-it-yourself project will turn out? Yeah, like right now. Well, First Bank and Trust has a do-it-yourself retirement plan that's foolproof. Hey, nothing's foolproof. Our foolproof IRA is. Your money is insured. You can know the exact amount of interest you'll get, and your First Bank and Trust banker is there with free help. The foolproof IRA from First Bank and Trust. We're a bank that believes in performance. Happy Thanksgiving from WTTV. For the good times. The following sports special is being brought to you in part by your Hooks Dependable Drug Stores. Indiana High School Athletic Association proudly presents another championship event. Your network sponsors are the Milk Promotion Services of Indiana, Farm Bureau Insurance, and the nearly 700 Farm Bureau Insurance agents located throughout the state of Indiana, and American Fletcher National Bank. At American Fletcher, the advantage is yours. It's the 5A State High School Football Championship, the first ever for this particular bracket. This is Jerry Baker along with Ben Davis, high school head football coach Dick Dullahan. We have already run three plays in our championship game because of the overrun of the basketball game. And it is Warren Central on offense. They took the ball, the opening kickoff, into the end zone. Out to the 20-yard line, they have run three plays, picked up one first down. That ought to pass about standing quarterback Jeff George. Now they have two first downs with the penalty just marked off. It is first and ten from the midfield striper just into Valparaiso territory. The pass comes on the near side to Torrance Terrell out of the backfield. Pat Rooney knocks him down. And Dick Dunahan, it's, uh, it's early in the football game. Not much has been established so far. A couple of things we do know, though. Jeff George is simply one of the best high school quarterbacks in the country, maybe one of the best quarterbacks without tagging high school on there at all. And we know that Valparaiso is big and rough and tough. Without a doubt, Valparaiso is right now, in the po this point in the game, they're getting beat with speed. They ran Terrence Terrell out of the backfield in the last play for a big game. One of the concerns that Mark Hoffman, the head coach of Valparaiso, had was the speed. Here is the pitch back to Terrell. Got some running room on the right side. Will get the first down, skirts the sideline, and is knocked out on about the 30-yard line. And that is another first down. Sam Bernardi, the defensive left end of that area, comes in to make the stop. And there is Terrell. He's 5'10", 169-pound sophomore. Now the corner comes up and really is in great position, but just with sheer speed, Terrell's able to outrun him. Number 12 to the corner. Frank Wilson just didn't quite have enough speed to make up. There was a good stock block on the outside there by Andy O'Brien. Third first down of this drive. Terrell is in the backfield along with Ron Clark. Trap. The give is to Clark. Inside trap. Inside the 20, almost to the 19-yard line. A pickup of almost 10 yards on the play will give him nine. And it'll be second down and one. Now they said, Let's take a look at the offensive uh, situation here, Dick, with this Warren Central Ball Club, Jeff George, Ron Clark, 
Sparkman will also be in that backfield. Terrell is there. They got some good wideouts, and they've got speed in that backfield and at the wideout spots also. And great hands. Off. No score. First series of this ball game. Clark and Terrell again in as cohorts in that backfield. Split with a tight end set to the right side. George will throw for the second time. Getting a go into the end zone and over through the intended receiver. That's one of the few times, Jerry, where you'll see Jeff actually made the bad decision there. He tried to unload it deep, but Clark was wide open underneath. Here's the defensive alignment for the Valparaiso Vikings, and they are big. Bernardi, Nice, Barone, Cornell, the other Barone. Linebacking core of Baldwin and Rooney. Boy, this Rooney's quite an athlete. He's a great one. He's also a very outstanding track man. They average defensively 202 pounds per man. Along that defensive line, Warren Central's offense is awfully strong also with 222 pounds per man offensively. They've got the pass out of the backfield to Ron Clark, and Clark is out of bounds at about the 12. Now, that, that play was the same play where I remarked that he missed Clark. Somebody upstairs told him, and here's Clark coming out of the backfield, the same play as last time, and Jeff hits Clark, a nice pass. The problem is, the li inside linebackers have to cover the backs out of the backfield. And Warren Central's notorious for flood routes out of the backfield. In fact, they've got it flooded left to the wide to the left side. You can't see it at the bottom of your screen. Two wide receivers. It's at the tight end of that side also. Sweep. Here it comes to Ron Clark with no place to go. He got it down to the 10, maybe the 9. Ball, they came from everywhere. Frank Wilson, the strong safety, led the attack. And Pat Rooney, that right side linebacker, was also in on the play. Now, that's one of the few times, Jerry, that they've been able to stop them for a short game. They had trips to the field plus the tight end. That's an unusual set. Warren hasn't used that very much this year. Got him a couple of yards on the play. Ball is just across the 10-yard line. We'll call it second down, and now let's call it a long eight. Jeff George, a senior. 6'3", 193 pounder running for his life into the end zone and he is deflected away on a good defensive play that time by number 49 Pat Rooney again and 48 is also in the area that is Joe Baldwin the left side linebacker so Baldwin the, gets the key that time watch him again coach I believe it's Baldwin that knocks the pass down it's a tremendous play by him because Clark is open early but George can't see him but Jeff throws the ball in a great play by Baldwin number 48. So it is third down and eight. So One of the things we talked about, Coach, before our telecast was Valparaiso cannot afford to get behind early in this contest. This is an important defensive series for them. This is a big down here, third and eight. Now, they need to get out with the field goal if they can. White House both ways. Pro set. Here is Jeff. George Throw into the back. end zone. It is knocked down again and a great defensive play by Larry Wright, the free safety. Extremely well read. Now, you can point to the scouting report. They had to have scouted and expected that. Now Jeff George rolls to his left and sets his feet. Coots is on a favorite route. Down and out. It's more of a V out. He comes in and goes back out to the corner. All right, the field goal attempt by Gary Bonin. He is an outstanding kicker. It'll come from right about the 17-yard line. 27 yards out with no wind, of course, here in the dome. It is up. And it is no good. Bonin misses wide to the left side. So Warren Sutcliffe's first drive comes up short. Nothing on the board. Bonin this year had hit 10 field goals, one of which was as long as 45 yards. And that may be a real uplifting experience for Valparaiso. Without a doubt, that is a surprising thing. Gary Bonin is almost automatic from that distance, Jerry. That's a chip shot for him. All right, we'll take a timeout, Coach. One of your network sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. Hey, excuse me? You got a minute? Uh, no, not really. I just got home from work. Oh. Yeah, I got a house to clean, dinner to cook, and two kids to take to piano lessons. You sound like a very busy person. I, I am. I hope you've got a few minutes to talk to your Farm Bureau insurance agent about life insurance. Everybody needs it, including you. Look, I really don't have the time. Besides, nothing ever happens to me. Hey, no piano lessons. 
introducing Casey, the tape player with personality. He rings and rings, he talks to you. Hi, my name is Casey. Casey, it's amazing the things you can do. Casey tells stories and jokes, too. So it's a joke, Casey. What do you get when you mix two ducks with one cow? Quackers and milk. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. Casey plays all your tapes, too. Santa Claus will be here real soon. Casey, you're amazing. Casey comes with activity book and cassette from Play School. Other cassettes sold separately. The outside beer. Oh, you're hot. There's the offense now for Bob Parazzo on their very first play from scrimmage. They lost six yards. The second play was a dive over left guard. Got maybe a yard, and that's about all. So it'll be a third down. At 14, Valparaiso will run the Veer offense. They have an outstanding quarterback, Steve Letnich, six-footer, 192 pound, a senior, has 12 TDs through the air. He will keep the. Rosalind Carter. Ronald Reagan is a particular kind of man, and that particular kind of man would choose as his wife someone like Nancy Reagan. After a rough start, the American people apparently like Ronald Reagan's choice. In 1981, a poll found people approved of the way Mrs. Reagan was handling her responsibilities, 57% to 26, a margin of 2 to 1. But an NBC News poll conducted for this program found people now approve of her 69% to 9, almost 8 to 1. And a strong majority of women, both housewives and those working outside the home, now thinks Mrs. Reagan sets a good example for women. Where do Americans rank her? In 1981, they put her fourth among the six most recent first ladies. But in our new poll, she rose to second place, trailing only Jacqueline Kennedy. Mrs. Reagan's change of image is obviously working, emphasizing her fight against drugs rather than her fancy lifestyle. A longtime observer of the First Lady questions how deep it goes. I don't think that Nancy Reagan has, has changed any. I think this is the same Nancy Reagan we saw four years ago. I think what's, what has changed is um, her realization of how she comes across in, to the public, and she's just become smarter. She knows how the game is played now. She knows how it's played. But one of the people involved in Mrs. Reagan's turnaround sees a profound change in the First Lady. I think she understands better now than she did at the beginning that she is in a position for the first time in her life to be more than just Mrs. Ronald Reagan, that she can do something with her life independently, which can make a change for the good. Whether it's public relations or personal growth, Mrs. Reagan plans to keep at it. Aides expect her to hold another anti-drug summit for first ladies this fall, and to make more foreign trips by herself. And she says she will also keep an eye on her husband's White House staff. In fact, the person who talks most about her growth in the last four years is the first lady herself. I don't know how you could help but not grow. You're exposed to so many different things and so many different people, so many different experiences. I mean, I mean, in a in a in a way, even the negative things that all happened in the beginning were probably part of a growth process. You know. How do you explain the fact that that people seem to like and be impressed with Nancy Reagan now? Well, I hope they I hope they like and like me, um, but I think it's a it's been a process of uh, of getting to know me, and and that took a long time. One thing that struck us the last few months was Mrs. Reagan's new interest in letting people know her. She now clearly wants the public to understand who she is, where she comes from, what she can do. The First Lady does not admit to any personal ambition, but there are signs of a woman who wants to be more than just a support system for her husband. Mrs. Reagan will never satisfy the feminists, but in a sense, she has been liberated by her new popularity, by her greater awareness of the platform she has, by the fact that she'll never have to face another election. 
As the Reagan presidency plays out then, Nancy Reagan will likely have a bigger and bigger role, committed to securing not only the president's place in history, but also her own. For NBC News, I'm Chris Wallace. Good night. Sally? Michael? Ah! Oh, it's oh. been a long time! Oh, it sure has. Gosh, you look terrific. Your hair looks terrific. Thicker, fuller. Because Affinity Shampoo helps renew the fullness hair can lose as it gets older. Affinity helps protect hair from breaking and thinning. So your hair can be thicker, fuller. Oh, you had some good times. You still look terrific. Renew the fullness with Affinity Shampoo. They call this cattle country. It's also where a lot of America's coal is. So when Sun Company built a Cadero mine here, folks worried about the future of the land. But Sun also developed this land reclamation center to make sure the land is properly restored. At Sun, we think putting our energy back into the land is just as important as getting it out. Where there's sun. days of our lives, Melissa's new lover has a secret that's about to be revealed. Hey, what will Melissa do now? Days of our lives. Then, on another world, it was a reunion they never dreamed of. My sister. My twin sister. But will a secret tear them apart this week? Wednesday, the Hollywood dream stripped bare. The real life story of five girls struggling for stardom. How far will they go reaching for the stars? Wednesday. This NBC News special has been sponsored in part by Sun Company. Where there's sun, there's energy. NBC News produced this program and is responsible for its content. I'm Bryant Gumbel. Tomorrow morning on Today, we'll check all the overnight developments in the Beirut hostage crisis. I'm Jane Pauley, and more of our talk with Clint Eastwood. Join us tomorrow morning on Today. A summer of tennis whites on a sea of green. A day of championship tennis. A Wimbledon afternoon, Saturday on NBC. The new plan calls for more magnet schools and less busing. And now the summer weather really begins. Mike Rozier is jumping from the USFL to the NFL. Those stories and more up next on New Center 33. Pontiac. The Mid-America Pontiac dealers have placed extra June orders for the most exciting cars on the road. Pontiac 6000, a unique combination of performance and value. Pontiac Sunbird, saving you even more with special factory incentives on four- and five-speed Sunbirds. There are more cars and bigger savings now at Nice Wonder Pontiac Huntington, Bob Porter Pontiac Ligonier, and Hyde Motors Bluffton, your Mid-America Pontiac dealers. Everyone wants to be part of Hudson's Daisy Sale, and why not? Hudson's Daisy Sale is the one time you can walk into the store and save almost everywhere you look. Daisy, Daisy, where does our love grow? Hudson's Daisy Sale, a perfect...